As we prepare for the word of the Lord, anybody excited about this series, On the Verge? We're on the verge of something great, hallelujah. And there's a simple song that just says, hold on, don't let go. Because when you're on the verge, sometimes it feels like you want to give up. Sometimes it seems dark, but God says, just hold on. Don't let go because you're on the verge of something great, hallelujah. You can worship with us as we sing this song. This morning it says, don't let go. Don't you let go. It says, you just hold on. To your faith. To your faith. 
Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another worship experience here at the Ogwood University Church. My name is Kirk Nugent, and I get to serve as your media pastor here, where we are becoming the church that Christ intended, but we are also excuseless, canceling the excuses that smother soul wellness. Man, have you been joining us for the 21 Days of Prayer? I tell you, this morning with Dean Linda Anderson was phenomenal. Ah, uh, that was a full meal. It's a, you know, it's supposed to be, you know, a bite size. No, no, that was a full meal. And I got to tell you, if you missed it, you want to go back and check that out. And I will also say this, if you missed last night's discussion, the Weekend Exhale with BOL, uh, Pastor Snell and I got a chance to interview Pastor Freddie Russell. If you missed that, that is a key ingredient on your excuseless journey as well. If you have a vision and a dream inside you, you want to listen you want to listen to that episode as well. I want to say a word of welcome to all of our family online. In fact, I see you chiming in. You're coming in from all over the country and even the world. I feel like we've just been together because we were literally just together a few minutes ago. And, uh, you know, Dr. Malcolm and uh, Dr. Nicole Taylor are here. Or they're ready. They're in the Praise Cafe. And you'll you'll see the, the excuseless banner behind them as they uh, facilitate uh, our, our time together today. Uh, but I just want to, to to share one little nugget and make a personal invitation. If you have not been 
catching us for the 21 days of prayer, all right, for the Excuseless series, going through this book. We are on chapter 7 today, chapter 8 tomorrow. If you have not been, 6 a.m. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Sabbath and Sunday, I want to admonish you. I want to encourage you. I want to personally invite you to be sure that you come. This has been an awesome experience, and we have seen God moving in the lives of his people. It truly, <clears throat> it truly is a revolution, and we want to make sure you are going to be part of it. We want to make sure you're going to be part of it. Dean Anderson said this morning that this book is your burning bush. This is your burning book. Somebody said in the chat, I love the way that, you know, we, we have this, this, this whole family vibe together as the chat continues. Um, but I want to say this as we, as we, as we prepare for worship and, you know, the, the, the message today is, 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 is going to be something powerful still under the theme excuses. And I've been teasing with you all week that there's going to be something special in the worship experience today. Uh, Stephen Manders in his groove are ready to sing right before the, the message today, right before the sermon. And it, it, uh, it, it might be something special. I've been teasing with you all week, but today is the day. But I want to share this. This was from, this actually wasn't from myself. This wasn't from Dean uh, Linda Anderson this morning. This was from somebody in the comments. And they said, fear is what if. Faith is even if. And we talked about this in the context of the promises of God. We talked about this in the context of being able to uh, stand Though the heavens fall, being able to stand in, in regardless of what we see happening being able to stand because we know who is with us, who is with us. The truth of the matter is we have no idea when God will come. There's a song that even says, we know not the hour. Uh, in fact, uh, let me share that thing with you real quick this morning. We know not the hour. Of the masters appearing, yet signs all foretell that the moment is nearing. When he shall return, tis a promise most cheering, but we know not the hour. But one thing is sure, he will come, he will come. Let us watch and be ready, he will come, he will come. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he will come in the clouds of his Father's bright glory. But we know not the hour. Let's pray. God, we stand in anticipation for all that you are going to do in this worship experience. We, we come uh, from the four corners of the, er of the earth to this platform, to this online session, and we know you are here. God, we want to live in the even if of life, recognizing who is with us. Father, forgive us our sins and cleanses of unrighteousness. Open our minds and our hearts and our spirits to receive all that you are going to provide today, whether it be in our Sabbath school, whether it be through the music and the praise and worship and the testimonies of your people, even in the prayer moment, if God, if it's even in the preached word, we pray that we would receive all that you have in store. Bless us to this end, we pray, God, in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen.
Good morning. Good morning. Good. Online family. Yes, How right. are you? Our OUC online family. Yes. It is so good to be here on a crisp Sabbath day. Crisp, cool. Yeah, crisp, Sabbath cool. Day. Here in Huntsville, Alabama, I think our high is 55 degrees, you know, mm. after feeling a good spring weather, we're feeling like a uh, fall weather today, but that's okay. That's right. The sun so, is partially shining. Yeah, so how have you guys been? Let mm -hmm. us know in the chat. Mm -hmm. Dr. Woods asked us this morning, how was our week? Yeah. And I said it was long. It really, it felt long. And mm -hmm. There was a lot mm -hmm. of things going on and mm -hmm. busy. So, mm -hmm. yeah. but yes. Yeah, I see you, Roycelyn. Good morning. See you, Denzel, across the yes. pond. Good morning. And Sheila, good to see you guys. Um, it has been so, so, so yes. wonderful yes. Uh, to study this week because um, I just couldn't wait. I know it. Um, you know, just going back to saying it was a long, busy week, you oh. know, but but when you start Excuse studying me. the lesson, yes. when you start studying the lesson, mm -hmm. you know, the Holy Spirit just moves us, you yes. know, to not even think about mm -hmm. the woes of life. All right. You know? Yes, I hear you. So yeah. I'm not going to give an excuse because no, I'm it, going it's to excuseless. be excuseless. It's behind us. That's right. Yeah. So Kimberly said, uh, hashtag committed and covered. And yes, good morning, Precious. Good morning, yes, Sharon. Yes. Good morning, Marissa. And I saw Sandra, um, S S uh, Sharon, Celia, Celia in mm -hmm. the chat this morning. Yeah. Um, yeah. And committed Kimberly, to coverage tonight at five. Yes. And Gregory. Central time. Um, oh, welcome, Veronica. Yeah. That's my girl. Yeah. Welcome. Uh -huh. So we have some really good, you know, we, we've been talking about the great controversy. Oh, yeah. The last couple of Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. So we're into the third lesson of mm -hmm. this quarterly. Okay. And yeah. um, do you want to go ahead and get into it, baby? Yeah, I want to get into it. And I want to remind them, guys, because this is our family, right? This is our OUC right. online family, mm -hmm. right? So remember, put your comments and your questions in the chat. This is a dialogue and not a monologue. That's and right. if something hits you that you're like, hmm, wow, okay, throw it in there. You know, let us know. Right. And uh, we'll try to field it or um, our online uh, administrators can jump in too. But if, if we, we see those it. questions, yeah, if we miss it, if we see those questions, we're definitely going to touch them and comments to our lesson. So even if you didn't look at the lesson, right, even if you don't know what it's about, we're going to make it so plain that you can follow along with us, yes. right? Because wow. we're going to show you the title of the lesson right here now where it says light shines in the darkness. Mm. Yes, light shines in the darkness. And what I love about it is, um, let's look at it like this. Light shines in the darkness, yes. Right. So if a dark room is illuminated with light, mm -hmm. but light shines in the darkness of your mind. Okay. You want to further elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah. And teacher. that's what we're going to do throughout <laughs> this Sabbath lesson today. The light is shining in your mind, right? And uh, as we go through the lesson, it will become more and more plain to you that the light is coming to you in your mind. Yeah. Right. Because I mean, that's like what the that. battle is. And we're going to talk about that, too. Yeah. But also, you know, <clears throat> I like the point that you've made. But also, you know, in the lesson, it talks mm -hmm. about how um, the devil, how he's seeking to yes. destroy us. Right? That's right. That's right. Because he is that dragon. Mm -hmm. And we know that a dragon, you know, basically um, desires to destroy God's people. Yes. Yes. But then it also talks about how he is a serpent and okay. he is cunning with his yes. lies. Yes. And, and, very, and he tries to deceive us. And we know that. And so what we have to do as Christians, mm -hmm. understand who we are dealing with mm -hmm. every day and definitely during the time of trouble. That's right. You are so correct. And like Eloise said, uh, darkness is the absence of light. Right. And when we are dark in our minds, it's the absence of God's light to help us to understand which way we should go. So let's look at this next slide so we can understand more of what I'm talking about. Then Jesus told them, you are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light mm. before darkness overtakes you. 
Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. And this comes from John chapter 12, verse 35, the NIV version. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here's what that's talking about. You know, if you go back and look at John chapter 12, this is the Passion Week. Well, the beginning of the Passion Week. And Jesus has has come in through his triumphal entry. And I love the Gospels, the way you get a different picture of what's going on that's monumental Mm -hmm. in the walk of Jesus' life. So now this is the triumphal entry. But then Jesus uh, dashes their hopes because they thought that the kingdom was supposed to be eternal, right? right? Starting now on earth. But Jesus told them that I've got to be lifted up when it's, you know, and they're like, uh, that's not the Messiah we know. Right. <laughs> right. So I'm talking about darkness in the mind. And so Jesus is telling them, you got to believe in me and what I say. Right. You got to read it. John chapter 12. So when he tells them what they don't want to hear. Right. That's us, y'all. When God <laughs> tells us what we don't want to hear, we turn off to his light. We turn off his light mentally, and then we become blind and feel deaf. Like we are in yes. the dark, and we're in the dark. We're groping around in the dark. Even Jesus said, "A blind man leading another blind man, they will find themselves in a ditch." Mm. Right. So what happens is when we don't get what we want to hear through God, we turn off his light. And the word is his light, right? Mm-hmm. And we're going to go through that in the lesson. So you get asked me a great question. Well, what do you mean, brother teacher, when you say it's the mind that needs to be illuminated? Okay. Yes. And, but also when we read the scripture, yes. John chapter 12, verse 35, the mm-hmm. part where it says, whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Mm-hmm. And so that touched me because... We can all relate to times when we've been walking in the dark, but we we knew, we just knew where we were going. Mm. But then God revealed to us, no, no, my children, you you, you don't know where you're going. No. And that's why we have to definitely stay in the word. Yes. And that's like what we were talking about last week. There's a way that seems right to a man, but it leads to destruction. And we have to not feel like we can do it on our own. Right. And that's what Jesus's plea was. Believe me. And if you don't believe me first, believe the miracles that you see. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. I mean, if a man and we expect a Messiah. Right. Right. Understanding the Bible like the Old Testament Jews understood the Bible. They were expecting a Messiah around the time that the Messiah came. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, he's doing he's he's doing miracles that you've never seen before. Healing all sorts of diseases. He's right. putting doctors and hospitals out of business. He's putting morticians out of business, right? Being the example, Be- oh, showing my. who he's, who he is. I mean, he's healing. He's raising people from mm-hmm. the dead. I mean, what more do what we need to see during that time? Mm-hmm. And they, and they kept asking for a sign, right? And I like what Alicia just posted in okay. the chat. She says, in order for the ten virgins to have light in their lamps, which represented the word, mm-hmm. they needed the Holy Spirit, yes. the oil in their lamps. Mm-hmm. The transformation and power comes from his, from the Holy Spirit power. That's right. That's right. That's a great example, Alicia. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how do we get the Holy Spirit, right? Right. The, if you go to the book of Hebrews, it tells us that we get the Holy Spirit in measure, in our own measure. God mm-hmm. gives us what we yes. need, right? Yes. And we have to ask. And even in the book of James, if you ask for it, he'll give it to he you. He will give it to but us. But you can't ask for it and then walk away as That's if right. you don't believe that God will give it to you. Right. Um, right. Sister Clark said, confusion is the absence of light in our mm-hmm. lives. And mm-hmm. that's so true. Yes. And, you know, when we, when we talk about confusion, guys, if you are confused, right, don't waddle in self-pity, mm-hmm. right? Because if you know you're confused, that is the first step to coming out of confusion. And then also it goes back. I don't think you heard that, baby. <laughs> I, okay, I heard If it, you so know I, that you're confused, that's the first <laughs> step to come out of confusion. Yeah, just right? like when you know you have a problem. Yeah, thank uh, a you. A drug problem or well, whatever. Well, you know, in the 12-step mm-hmm. program, the first, admit. you have to admit, right, that you have a problem. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's the thing about confusion. If you know that you're confused, now you have to find your way. But like what Jesus said... You have eyes, but you don't see. You have ears, but you Mm -hmm. don't hear. Lest you begin to see and lest you begin to hear. So he's giving, he's telling you have a choice, right? But go ahead with your point. No, I was just going to say all that you're saying, it goes Mm -hmm. with that deception piece. Yes. 
you know, that deception piece that Satan wants to put on us. Mm -hmm. But again, even in our ignorance, yes, if we just continue to trust in God, get mm -hmm. in his word, all those things that Satan is trying to deceive us with, it's mm. in the word. It is. Because we know Satan is a liar. <laughs> and the father of it. Right. Right. And that helps us out with this next test. These next two te texts are a compare and contrast. Go ahead, babe. Okay. We can read the next slide. Compromise Satan's subtle strategy. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And this is John chapter 14, verse 6, NIV version. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks mm. his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. And this comes from John chapter 8, verse 44, the NIV version. Yes, I, mm. I'm, I'm really like smiling really hard because, yeah. I, you know, when the Bible becomes a part of you and you begin to make the narrative right. plain, it is amazing. Like the first text that we read, John 14, mm -hmm. 6, you know, Jesus is talking to his disciples, you know, because they're asking him, mm -hmm. you know, what, where are you going? And right. then Jesus says, I am the way. So that exchange, Jesus lets them know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So he's having that exchange with his disciples. But what you read in the next frame was mm -hmm. John chapter 8, verse 44. So now this is the argument that ensues. These Jews are not believing Jesus, right? Right. And so they tell him that he's not the son of God. And they told him, you don't even know who your father is. So they took a jab at him, mm -hmm. right? Because the rumor was understood that Jesus was a, a child from an, an illegitimate relationship that Mary had. Right. Right. So that's no confusion, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, well, we don't know who his father is because Joseph tried to save face and Mary and marry Mary so that she mm -hmm. won't look like a bad woman. Right. So the rumor was, well, you know, he doesn't know who his father is. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So now they're throwing a jab at him. Right. Okay. But then Jesus says, what you see me do, you are denying me. And your denial comes directly from your father, yes. which is, which the, is devil. the devil. And then not the only that, of lies. and then and Jesus knew their heart. He said, not only do you deny me, you want to kill me. Yes. And so, yeah, your father is a murderer first, a liar, and the truth has never been in him. The truth and I, isn't in you. I just love that exchange because Jesus hit them at their core, you know. And, you know, typically when people take a jab at you, that's yes. to get you to come out of your character. Yes. But mm -hmm. he stayed in character, which yes. is awesome. And then I like what S Celia says. She says, the devil lies like a penny in a parking lot. That's, <laughs> ah, that's pretty <laughs> that's, good. That's pretty good. Hey, yes. But the sad thing is, Cecilia, uh, Celia, uh, we pick it up. Yeah, but even from in the, the human perspective, but even with Sunday's lesson, you know, they give a comparison of Satan. He was a liar from the beginning when mm -hmm. he deceived Eve. OK. By telling her. Well, he was Apple, a liar from the beginning in heaven. Well, yeah. When he changed. But that's my example. That OK. I use. All right. Babe, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he lied to her in the um, Garden of Eden, in the um, garden. Mm -hmm. And then but God, mm -hmm. all the promises, all of the hopes that he's given us mm -hmm. in the Bible. He has never lied to us. No, but that's a belief system. You have to develop that belief system because Satan tries to bring in doubt and he tries to seduce us with the seed of doubt. And not mm -hmm. only that, the seed of discouragement and just to really like change our point of view. And I like what Denzel said. He says, mm -hmm. the more we draw closer to God, the more Satan is exposed. Definitely. That's right. For yes, what he is. Yes, and yes. to whom much is given, much is, much required. is required. Because the closer we get to God, the more we understand. When we walk away from God, we know what we're walking away from. Right. The more and more. And, you know, this next slide gives us some light on what Satan constantly tries to do, that pest. Hmm. Let's look at this next slide. Satan is constantly presenting inducements to God's chosen people to attract their minds from the solemn work of preparation for the scenes just in the future. He is every sense of the word a deceiver, a skillful charmer. He clothes his plans and snares with covering of light borrowed from the heaven. He tempted Eve to eat of the forbidden fruit by making her believe that she would be greatly advantaged thereby. Satan has many finely woven dangerous nets which are mm -hmm. made to appear innocent, but with which he is skillfully preparing to infatuate God's people. And this comes from Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 550. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah. So so he's constantly presenting mm-hmm. us with something, right? Constantly. For those of you who study fervently, you know, he constantly presents the idea of weak faith or what you're reading isn't mm-hmm. real. Right. And for those of us who have not been able to grasp what God is trying to say, you're new mm-hmm. at this. What he's trying to do is discourage you from creating your new life, right? Mm -hmm. And your new life in Christ, right? So he comes at us on all ends, wherever your soft point is. You know, he's not going to try to come at you where your armor is No, he studies us like a book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he studied, well, he he gets a PhD in us. Yeah, he does. And he knows what our weaknesses are, those sensitive Mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. And so, again, he doesn't come at us. Um, blatantly where we can just see it. Yes. It's deceitful because yes. that is his nickname. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. So like what Amanda said, the devil instills deception, deception. Mm-hmm. in our mind from birth. Yeah, because we're born in shape and in iniquity. Right. Right. So that, that insecurity, you know, sets in and Satan is constantly trying, you know, to work on us. And um, D- um, Joyce Patterson stated it too, and he also brings it into the church. Yes. He, he does. brings confusion into the church. As and, well. you know, and that's our segue into the next thing, because in our lesson, it talks about savage wolves. Mm. All right. So let's read this next slide about okay. savage wolves. For I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flocks of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will Mm. come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. And this comes from Acts chapter 20, verses 27 to 32. Mm. Yeah. So this is this is Paul talking here. Right. And he savage wolves are coming. Right. Right. And from within the church, from within the church. Yeah. So (laughs) it's amazing with tears. He preached in in, in, with fervent for three years, for three years. And that's the thing, you know, (laughs) these wolves who are in sheep's clothing, uh, what we see in our church, like what you mentioned earlier before we went into this slide is the devil's tactic to throw us off. Right. Right. And we so readily accept it. Right. And the prayer is that you're not one of those wolves or you or I. Because in the lesson, it talks about how Mm -hmm. heresies would enter the church. Mm -hmm. False doctrines would be substituted for divine truths. Mm -hmm. Pagan practices would prevail. And we see all of that happening today. Today. Yes. Yes. And then what we've seen is the shift in the belief system. Right. Where we believe in. As soon as you die, you go to heaven. Right. And, and guys, the Bible does not support that anywhere. That as soon as you die, you go to heaven. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, supporting uh, spirits that come back and talk. And right. the Bible does not support from that as well. That's right. And then the false day of worship from Saturday, Sabbath mm-hmm. to Sunday, first day of the week. The Bible doesn't support that either. You know, there's some things that we have to call out that the Bible does not support. Uh, That shouldn't be our first part of the conversation. But if we get to it, we have to blatantly say and honestly say that Satan has given us some deceptions that we readily accept as Christians. Yeah, especially. And I think we talked about this before, Mm -hmm. um, how he deceives some people with a little truth, with some truth mixed with. The untruth. Always, always. And so it makes people question, well, mm-hmm. hmm, that, this is basically, this is true. And, and then, you know, pretty soon you start mm-hmm. saying to yourself, okay, well, I believe it in its entirety. Yes. You know? Yeah. Even with the idea of separation in death, you know, it does hurt when we lose a loved one. But this, this, this mm-hmm. subtle lie that Satan now gives that the loved one dies and goes straight to heaven, you know, mm-hmm. it helps us to feel better in our depression or right. our a bereavement, time of bereavement, but the truth of the matter is our dead loved one is Mm -hmm. asleep in Christ and awaiting for his call if we are in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yes, yes, Mm -hmm. yes. Um, Yes. 
And um, Robert says the devil knows he has a short time, so he is at work. Yes, he's busily at mm -hmm. work, you know, trying to get us to go in the opposite direction that we need to go into yeah. through his deceptions. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the devil does have but mm -hmm. a short time. So let's, you know, how do we work our way through yes. these wolves? So let's read this next slide. Safeguarded by the word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. And this comes from 2 Timothy verse 3, chapter 3, verse 16. And then also it says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the devil, from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Wow. And this comes from John chapter 17, verses 15 through 17. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So those two texts, right, you know, which helps us to begin to understand. That all scripture is inspired by God, not yes. some parts, but all of it, you yes. know. And, and, and God, he says the whole Bible must be accepted by the word of God. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Otherwise, the door is open for deception. It is. It is. And that's what Paul was talking about yes. in Second Timothy. Uh, all scripture is given by inspiration. Right. And what I love about it, and it is given for instruction. Mm -hmm. There is instruction in God's word. But then when you look at John 17, that's another way of looking at what Jesus is now saying right. to, the, to the, the disciples, you know, in his prayer. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And um I love it that Jesus said in verse 17, you know, John 17, 17, where he says, sanctify them by the truth. Or yes. some texts will say by your truth, right? And it says your word is true. Then you might say, well, what is the word or your word? Mm -hmm. The Bible, Genesis to Revelation. That's right. Because in the book of John, the first chapter, it tells us that the word became flesh because Jesus is the word, was the word, and the word became flesh. What is the word? Right. The word is the Bible. And like Philip says, you can't choose what you want to believe. Ooh. But we also have a question, mm. a question from Lisa Applewhite Linton. She says, we are encouraged to pray without ceasing. However, that verse stated Paul prayed for three years. What is the time limit for intercessory prayers? What is the time limit for intercessory prayers? We can't put a time limit mm -hmm. on intercessory prayers, Right. Uh, we had a segment where we talked about prayer. Right. Prayer is your default setting, right? Yes. And pray without ceasing is a life of prayer, right? Right. Um, so uh, when we break down what prayer is, prayer is a time when we actually have a dialogue with God, right. not right. necessarily a monologue. And that dialogue is like this when we pray. We pray to God. We petition, right? Correct. We ask for the illumination of the Holy Spirit to understand his word and what he's trying to tell us. And then we open up the Bible just because you said a man, you're still living a life of prayer. That's right. the idea of pray without ceasing. Right? So I prayed morning, afternoon, evening, Night. I open up the word. I still active prayer. That's prayer without ceasing. And then I live it. So then I live my life of prayer. So that's how we pray without ceasing. You know, sometimes we get a little bit rigid in our thought and we, attempt to pray without ceasing, mm -hmm. but then you wouldn't accomplish anything if you stayed in your prayer closet 24 hours a day, right? right? You would be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Mm -hmm. uh, so with that thought, prayer is a lifestyle. In our default setting. In our default setting. And that's what Jesus mm -hmm. did. If we look at the life of Jesus, he woke up very early in the morning to pray. Sometimes he did not go to sleep and he would pray and pray and pray and that would fuel him for his day. Yes, yes. Because he lived the life of prayer that he experienced in the mm. early morning hours. That's right. So hopefully that answered your question or, you know, at least gave something to even those who think about it. Mm -hmm. Prayer is a lifestyle that does not stop at amen. Right. Amen is just your will be done. So be it. You know, you're in agreement with what you've what, what the Lord will say to you and has said to you, and it's amen, I agree. That's what amen is. Yes. Not, it's not the end. <laughs> like you said, we have to live it too, so mm -hmm. but, um, thank you. So we yes. hope, Lisa, that question was answered. Amen. Thank um, you for that. Let's yes. keep doing that, guys. So let's look at this next slide. 
It, the word of God, is a light shining in a dark place. As we search its pages, light enters the heart, illuminating the mind. By this light, we see what we ought to be. We see in the word warnings and promises with God behind them all. We are invited to search these, this word for aid when brought into difficult places. If we do not consult the guidebook at every step, inquiring, is this the way of the Lord? Our words and acts will be tainted by selfishness. We shall forget God and walk in paths that he has not chosen for us. And this comes from my life today, page 27. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I like this because it's telling us what we should be doing. Yes. You know, searching the word um, because we're going to go through things. Mm -hmm. And and I think um, Royce Lynn stated that the Bible is also... Um, uh, for us to for correction mm -hmm. and um, and it's telling us in what I just read that you know when we consult the guidebook mm -hmm. with every step inquiring the yeah. way of the Lord he is going to guide us and tell us yes because what it says is it's a word right mm -hmm. and it has warnings and, and promises. promises and the warning is you cannot trust yourself because even with Jeremiah 17, 9, the, above all things, the heart is deceitful and desperately yes, wicked. Yes, Who can know yes. it? Your first inclination is to be wicked. Mm -hmm. And until you begin to understand that, you begin to, when that sets into your members, you know that you are a recovering sinner mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as a recovering sinner, you so, you're supposed to act like that, right? right. So back to that 12-step concept. When a, a recovering addict understands that they are ever recovering from their addiction right. and right. they cannot play games with their addiction and, and or dependency. Right. And our sister uh, Veronica says consulting God in darkness can be a deeply personal experience, mm -hmm. often involving prayer, meditation and reflection. Mm -hmm. And that's so true, because even in what we just read, um, it says our words and acts will be tainted by selfishness. So we will forget mm -hmm. in our own humanness yes. when we're going through um, in some dark places or something that's deeply personal to us. Oftentimes we can forget because we can be deceived, that mm -hmm. deception part of Satan, and we will forget, and then we'll walk in the paths that God has not chosen mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a human trait, that forgetting. Yes. Right, because the fourth so commandment, easily what is the fourth, fourth commandment says remember. Mm -hmm. Because when sin set in, forgetting is one of our default settings as well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then from a human mind, we can't always remember anyway. But that is the And I truth. like what um, Sister Amanda Winfield said. We should deposit the word in our hearts so we can have something to withdraw from. That's right. Our spiritual bank. Oh, yeah, we got to have an mm -hmm. arsenal, an arsenal of scripture so that when we are in those dark places or mm -hmm. Satan is trying to deceive us. Because remember when we were in Psalms, I talked about, mm -hmm. you know, I, I saw this social media post where, the guy, where this guy said that, when Satan attacks us with these thoughts that mm. just pop up in our mind, we have to look at it as a spiritual warfare. He said guerrilla warfare, like who sent you? Mm -hmm. Counter those negative um, thoughts with God's word. And, yes. and like Sister Winfield said, you know, when we have our arsenal of scripture, which is the Bible, but, mm -hmm. you know, have those tools, then we can counteract that, those mm -hmm. negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh one of our sisters says she loved to stay in her closet 24-7. <laughs> but can you imagine Jesus? Jesus would have loved to have stayed in his prayer mode with his father all day. Mm -hmm. But he was on a mission, right? And uh, and being on that mission, he had to come amongst wolves mm, yeah. and sheep that were led astray without a shepherd. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. So mm -hmm. let's read what human reasoning does on this next slide. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the mm. end, it leads to death. All and right. that comes from Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. I'm sorry. And then we'll look at, we'll read the next slide. And it, this one is um, a little long, but guys, it's really good. Spiritual darkness has covered the earth and gross darkness the people. There are in many churches skeptics and infidelity in the interpretation of the scriptures. 
many, very many are questioning the ver verity and truth of the scriptures. Human reasoning and the imaginings of the human heart are undermining the inspiration of the word of God and that which should be received as granted is surrounded with a cloud of mysticism. Mm -hmm. Nothing stands out in clear and distinct lines upon rock bottom. This is one of the marked signs of the last day. The holy book has withstood the assaults of Satan, who has united with evil men to make everything of divine character shrouded in clouds and darkness. But the Lord has persevered this holy book by his own miraculous power in its present shape, a chart or guidebook to the human family to show them the way to heaven. And this comes from Selected Messages, um, book one, page 15. Mm -hmm. That was a lot, mm -hmm. but it yeah. went well with the text, right? right? And the text before, well, you know, when it said there's a way that appears it right, be right, but it leads to death, and that's, that's Proverbs right. mm -hmm. sixteen twenty five. And then what we read in in selected messages where Satan has put a dark mm -hmm. cloud around God's word, right? And, and you know, and because of that, we're led astray. Right. And the lesson says one of the devil's most effective deceptions is to lead us to believe that human reasoning, mm. unaided by the Holy Spirit and wow. uninformed by the word of God, is sufficient to understand God's will. There may be a way that seems right to us mm -hmm. or even to entire cultures, but it may be totally wrong in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a word. Yes, that, that, that's a big word. And, and I think we had a que have a question from Amanda. How do we know the path is leading to death when we believe we are on the right path? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I believe that God gives us the signs, um, whether we choose to believe them or not. But to, for me, when you're going down the wrong path mm -hmm. that's leading to death, your life, it shows in your life. You keep running into those brick walls. Okay. You keep having those um, bad situations that mm -hmm. are happening. But when you're in the word and when you know that it's God, then he's going to reveal to you mm -hmm. those things that you're supposed to see and mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have um, the the word that guides us in our lives to mm -hmm. let us know, okay, this is God because I'll be able to hear his voice. Yes. I won't prayerfully be deceived because I have, again, like we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. have those arsenal of Bible scriptures to counteract this wrong pathway mm -hmm. that I'm going down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and to and, and let's give an example. You know, math is usually a Achilles heel for a lot of us, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're in a difficult math class, when you're given a problem, they give you the answer key, right? Mm -hmm. And if not the answer key, they give you a sample problem. And an in that example. sample problem, mm -hmm. it gives you the what we call the formula okay. to work the problem, right? And in that formula, that formula works every mathematical problem that is placed on the board. I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. Okay, brother. That teacher. formula works every mathematical problem. It may be a different set of numbers and characters and signs, mathematical signs, but the formula, that one formula works every problem that's placed on the board. Okay. Right? So what Jesus has told us, the formula, the key, is in Genesis is found in Genesis to Revelation, right? Mm -hmm. And you ask the question, how do I know if I'm going down the mm -hmm. right path? And you know, even Paul said, work your salvation out with fear and trembling. trembling. And not the not the unhealthy fear that Satan tries to place mm -hmm. in us, but people. the healthy fear, understanding that you are fallible, right? So the key has been given to us, back to the mathematical mm -hmm. ideology mm -hmm. or idea. The key has been given us from Genesis to Revelation. So you know that whatever problem has been placed in front of you, the mm -hmm. answer can be found in his word. Right. Then just like a class that's tough for you, the best way for you to learn it is to learn it. Mm. <laughs> you know, you can't just look right. at the board and even know that the instructor has put the key on the board because if you don't study it for yourself, you don't even know that the key is up there to help you solve the problem. As right. a matter of fact, the key <laughs> looks like a problem. That's right. But it's the formula. It's the right. formula for you to work this thing out. But because you're not mm. studying, Preach even it. the formula to work it out looks it like looks, a problem. It looks difficult. 
And now um, that's like our sister Joyce Patterson said, test and try everything by the scripture. I'm feeling that. Yeah. You know, and that's a word, guys. Even the formula looks like a problem when you're not studying. Right. So Genesis to Revelation looks like a problem. Right. And here's the case in point. It looks like a hurdle. I just can't jump. Or even to take it even further, mm -hmm. when when you're having mathematical problems and you don't you don't get the help you need tutoring. Yes. Again, it goes back to back. you're looking. What help are you seeking to get? Studying. Or are you still just looking at it yourself? And I hate to say the word, but dumbfounded and not receiving the help that you need. And at a certain point in time, it becomes willful. Right. Because willful. God has given mm -hmm. us the measure to understand. Right, right. And that's why he says, ask, seek, and knock. You, mm -hmm. You've got to keep mm -hmm. doing it as if you're studying to find buried treasure because right. it is buried treasure. Mm -hmm. And I just love that, guys. You know, when we don't allow the Bible to become a part of us, because the Bible is the solution to the problem. Right. Even the solution looks like a problem. Mm. I love that. I know Sharon says God's formula, light minus darkness, divides mm. truth ha. from error. <laughs> yes. Oh, you know math. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Sharon. <laughs> you know math, and that's, that's the right. thing. That's you know, right. uh, you know, got problems, do the math. That's right. yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing, you know, and God is there for us wherever we are. And it's a battle, guys. And that's what this next slide is telling us, yeah, the battle, battle up for, for the mind. The mind. Mm. It says, and even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. And this comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 6. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you guys for placing those things in the chat. But yeah. that's amazing what mm -hmm. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians. If our gospel is veiled, mm -hmm. that means covered, not able to be understood is veiled to those who are perishing right? right and who are the ones that are perishing this is what what, mm -hmm. what we've got to understand the ones who are perishing are the ones who refuse to believe the truth that's right because john three sixteen tells us for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever right. believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life so how do you not perish you believe in jesus jesus is the truth and the life he and said i am free. the way that's i am the right. truth and the life. guys <laughs> there's the answer the key the, you know the the solution there's the formula Right. And it's literally saying our perception or mm. talking about our perception and mm. our mental faculties. Yes. Because we know that the battle is really between Christ and Satan in our minds. Yeah. And what Satan wants to do is take your mind. God wants us to give ourselves to him. Mm -hmm. Right. And drive us crazy. So let's read this last slide. And even if our God, I'm oh, sorry, yeah. here it is. The battle between Christ and Satan is a battle for the minds of men. Satan's principal work is to blind or darken men's minds. Mm. He does this by keeping them from the study of God's word. We talked about this by deranging the powers of the mind through the excesses of body and soul by woefully occupying the mind, wholly occupying the mind through the things of this life and by appealing to pride and self-exaltation. Mm. Volume chapter 6, page 854. Yes, and somebody mm. put that in the chat, you know, about uh, ego, being ego, your, your ego keeping you from mm -hmm. uh, accepting mm -hmm. God. But mm -hmm. that's that's Satan. What Guys, whatever yes. he can put in front of you, right, that's what he does. I mean, right. if that's your bait, right? That's your bait. He, like I said, he he reads us like a book. He mm -hmm. doesn't come at us with things that, you know, um, we can see. It's always a deceptive, deceiving way that we, we got to really be mm -hmm. on our P's and Q's. But that's why we talked about before putting yes. on the whole arm of whole Christ. Armor. The whole arm of Christ. And, you know, guys, we are up against some some things in this day and age. Yes, yes, You know, yes. when, you, when you put in AI, uh, when you put in all the negativity that mm -hmm. is already given toward the faith of the gospel. You know, you don't have to argue about your faith. No. You live your faith because a person that 
disagrees and does not want to believe, you got to save your breath yes, and yes. move on mm-hmm. because it's like what Paul told us. It's veiled to those who are perishing. Yes. And how do you perish? Because you don't love the truth. Right. Why do you not love the truth? Because you are obstinate in your ways and you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide that's you. That's right. And like Sister Amanda said, if Satan can get our minds, mm. victory is his. And yes. that's what we've basically been talking yes. about. Mm-hmm. deception in our yes, mind. Yes, yes. But the wonderful thing about it is that God can mm. redeem you yes, and bring yes. you back to a mm. clear mind because yes. he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, love power, and, power and, a and a sound mind. mind. And he can save to the uttermost, right? right. And that's the that's the absolute truth. And, you know, we're in this excuseless series, guys. Yes. And do you know when Christ comes back again and then even at his third coming, when he executes judgment, that there will be no excuse for no one. No. You can't say, well, I didn't know mm-hmm. because you mm-hmm. all of us have had our measure of right. light. And it's up to you to understand this belief system and to know that God has made a way. And like someone um, posted in the chat as we close out, Mm -hmm. the battle is not ours. It is the Lord's. It's the Lord's. Yes. It is. Turn it over to him. But although the battle is the Lord's, you got to suit up. And if you don't know how to suit up or or put on the right battle uh, armor, go to Ephesians 6, Mm -hmm. right, and read it for yourself. And then you'll know what you need to do. I think we got a little bit more time, but I think we might have to quit. But (laughs) I'll tell you this, guys, as we go through this lesson, this is the great controversy, the war between Christ and Satan. Good and evil. Good and evil. And Satan's claim that God's government is an unjust government, right? But we know for those of us who are true, solid believers that God is a God of love. Yes. God will not fail. That's right. And whatever you're going through, give him the opportunity to love on you. So let's pray. Our dear, most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this love that you've given us. Lord, illuminate our minds. Let us hear and understand and believe the truth, the truth, your word. Genesis, the revelation. Put it in our spirit. And then, Lord, let us be overcomers. Keep us and save us. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Hello and welcome to This Week at the OUC. I'm Pastor Paul Goodrich. And I'm Jalen Bobren. And we are happy to bring you the news that's happening this week at the OUC. (laughs) (laughs) So we begin with our Sabbath service. Um, On Sabbath, we continue our series, uh, Excuseless. Pastor Snell will be bringing us our message and the music will be brought to us by the Oakwood University Church Chorale. So we're looking forward to that. Yes, and then also we kicked off our 21 days of prayer this past Sunday, and we're keeping going. Um, This morning we had, uh, I don't remember who. (laughs) Uh, Well, this morning, well, I mean, by the time we show this, it would be afterwards, so it would be the the next next day. day. Okay, there we go. (laughs) There you go, Pastor Snell. So we look forward to seeing you um, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for our 21 days of prayer absolutely absolutely so uh but this afternoon at five o'clock we have our committed and covered and it's going to be uh led by our singles ministry um fuse which is faith uniting the single experience and they will be dealing with uh, the topic the purpose of singleness the art of dating and the pursuit of happiness so if you are single or if you know somebody who's single join us at 5 p.m on either zoom or our youtube sorry excuse me either our youtube platform or facebook Yes, and then also we have a deeper look with Pastor Chris Dorsey, our Bible study, um, which happens on Mondays evenings at 6.30 and finishes at 7.30 Central Standard Time. So we hope to see you there. You can join using the Zoom information on your screen. All right. Now we want to tell you about Cameras On. So this Thursday, the, the last Thursday 
of um, the fourth to Thursday of the month. I can't speak to that. I don't know what's I know, going it's, on. It's me too. Okay. It's okay. It's not only you. <laughs> okay. Okay. The fourth Thursday of every month, we have cameras on. And we kicked it off last month. We had a great time. We had about 22 people join mm -hmm. us. And we want to uh, double that. So we're looking for 50 people to join us online on Zoom. You can scan the QR code, register. Uh, but the key is your camera has to, to be, be on. on. Yes, we want to see you. And so also our Power Packed Fridays um, exhale with <laughs> Breath of Life. Uh, this Friday we're um, with Pastor Nugent, Ms. Danita Jones, and Pastor Snell on what just happened. A candid conversation about culture and relevant things that happened um, mm -hmm. this month. So join us at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Breath of Life YouTube pages, and we hope to see you there. All right. So um, there's so much that happens at the Oakwood University Church, and it just seems as if more and more is things are happening. And so we can't share everything in this announcement segment. So we want you to scan the QR code and by scanning the QR code, you will um, see the list of our newsletter that will show all the things that are happening here at the Oakwood University Church. <laughs> I thought you were going to jump in. <laughs> here at the OUC. There we go. And then you can also subscribe directly to the OUC weekly news e-newsletter by scanning the QR code on your screen. And that, when you do, um, when you scan that QR code, it'll go directly to your email. So scan the QR code so you can be keeping abreast of all that's happening here at the OUC. All right. So it's time for our birthdays and anniversaries. And uh, we have a number of individuals who celebrated a birthday from this past Sunday up to today. And so we're going to begin with Malcolm Court, N Naomi Okuru, uh, Shayna Smith, Cicely Thomas. Yes, Yay, happy Cicely. birthday, happy special uh, <laughs> birthday. Shout out to our youth uh, team leader here at the OUC. Yes, and Brenda Williams, happy birthday. Also celebrating, we have Oscar Crenshaw, Philip Jones, Kenzie Nugent, oh, oh, uh, the what? daughter of what? our <laughs> very own media pastor, Pastor who, Nugent. Who, who, is, who is producing this and like shouting in the background. <laughs> um, also, we want to give a special birthday shout out to Robert Schlatter and Teresa Woods. Happy birthday. We also have Hilla Abdullah, as Alcia Barnes, we have Eveth Cargill. Oh, Dr. Cargill, happy birthday. Kayla Cartwright, uh, Dr. Garland Doolin, well, happy birthday to you. Marva Hines, Karen Holland, and Tazi Hughes Taylor. Uh, continuing our birthday shout outs, we have Gabrielle Brown, Malachi Buchanan, Abraham Dode, Gavel Drummond, Tamisha Harrell, Avery Jacobs and Nyla, Nyla Jefferson. Happy birthday. Jacques Laguerre, Pastor Jacques Laguerre. Nice to, uh, to um, celebrate your birthday. Uh, Tiffany M McCarty, Marina Robinson, Ainsworth Smith, James Campbell, Jacqueline Edgecombe, Amari James, and Carla Minor. Happy birthday to you. And we still have one little list left. We have Anthony <laughs> Michael Blanco Pinnacook. Deborah Claiborne, Leroy Hampton, Lily Jasmine Notice, and J Jenny, excuse me if I mispronounced that, right. Happy birthday to you. And those are Sabbath birthdays. Yes, those so, are our Sabbath birthdays. So we're happy about that. In terms of our anniversaries, uh, we're aware of two anniversaries. We want to say happy anniversary to Daniel and Marie O'Boyle. Uh, celebrating their anniversary, as well as Leroy and jo uh, Janice, uh, Jan sorry, Janois Hampton. Uh, happy anniversary to you. And you know, there may be more birthdays mm -hmm. and anniversaries that we may not be aware of, but we want you to put, put it in, in the chat. chat. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So um, that's all for this week at the OUC. Me and Pastor Goodrich, we had a little rough. <laughs> it was rough today, but bear with us, bear with us. But no, they're a forgiving audience. <laughs> yes, yes. So. You guys are. You guys support us in everything that we do, so we thank you. But that's all for this week at the OUC, so we hope you have a blessed week. We hope to see you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for our 21 days of prayer, and we hope that you have a blessed week. Bye.
Hi kids, here in Oaktown, we want to wish a happy birthday to Elena, Judah, and Xavier. Happy birthday, 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 and happy birthday to each of you. Praise God. God has blessed you with another one. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Welcome to the worship experience of the Oakwood University Church. Located on the campus of Oakwood University in Huntsville, Alabama, and the home of the Breath of Life Television Ministries. Experience worship where Christ is first. Lives are transformed and sharing God's love flows freely. Welcome to the Oakwood University Church Worship Experience. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Oh, that was someone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It is such a blessing to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord, along with those who are watching with us online. Just a few brief announcements we want to share with you today. Uh, for those who have little ones, we want you to know that Children's Church is taking place in the Family Life Center. And so if you would like to go and get your little one checked in at the Sabbath School, now is the time for you to get them settled, that they might have songs and messages that speak directly to their spiritual experience. And then we just want to remind you that we are at the end of the first week of our 21 days of prayer. We want to encourage you to join us online on all of our Oakwood University Church and Breath of Life platforms. We'll be meeting tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. And during the week, we're meeting at 6 a.m. We're continuing under the theme, Excuseless. And we're talking about how to cancel all of the excuses that are smothering our soul wellness and joy. And we're continuing it not just on Sabbaths and in the morning, we're continuing that series on Wednesday nights as well. And so we encourage you to make sure you abide with us as we continue to try to grow collectively in our faith and in our spiritual experience. And then we just want to remind you that each Friday night at 8 o'clock p.m., there are a number of things happening online. Every first Friday, there is a Bible study on our Breath of Life platform. It's simply entitled The Playbook. Every second Friday, uh, we lead a discussion on marriage and relationships called Point of View. Uh, every third Friday, what we do is we have a ministry online at Breath of Life for all of our leaders and visionaries called The Vision Lab. And then every fourth Friday, we lead an online discussion. It is is simply entitled, That Just Happened, What Just Happened. And we're looking at the current events in the context of the Scriptures. And so we encourage you to join us each Friday night. And then we just want to remind you that next Saturday evening, there is going to be a very special couples outing, a very special couples outing. And so when you uh, look uh, on all of our different billboards uh, and bulletin boards throughout the uh, sanctuary, you'll get more information on what that is and how how you can register. And then next Sunday, for all of our newly married couples or engaged couples, there is what you call a honeymooners brunch. And that's for couples that have been married for 10 years and under. That'll be next Sunday morning at 12 p.m. Lastly, we ask that you will continue to keep the Trot family in your prayers as the funeral for Sister Kimberly Trot will be this Thursday here at the Oakwood University Church at 2 o'clock p.m. For those who are able, we would love for you to stop by and show your support and encouragement for the family as they maneuver through this season of grief. Uh, lastly, what we want to do is we want to put on the screen a first reading, a first reading uh, for all of the transfers for this month. Uh, there you'll get a, get a sense of all of those who are transferring in to become members of the Oakwood University Church, those who are joining by profession of faith. And then you'll see those who are transferring uh, to various cities and states. Um, and so this represents our first reading. And then on next Sabbath, we'll have our second reading. And then 
then we will receive those as members of the university church and release the membership of those who will be making their fellowship somewhere else. Uh, quickly, one of the things I do want to do briefly is I want to acknowledge the presence of any guests or visitors here with us. Uh, if you're here for the very first time at the Oakwood University Church, maybe you've come from out of town, maybe you've come from across town, but this is your first Sabbath with us, would you please stand so that we can recognize you today? Any first time guests or visitors? Amen. We got a family there at the back. God bless you. Let's put our hands together and give them a warm Oakwood University Church welcome. Amen, amen. And so we've all been sitting for a little bit. So let me get everybody to stand to their feet on the floor and in the balcony. If we can get everybody to stand to their feet. And if you don't mind, if you can just reach across the aisle, give a few fist bumps, give a few pounds, give a few hugs, and let's welcome one another into the house of the Lord. Come on, we welcome you into the house of the Lord this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, uh, and you and I came to rejoice in it. Come on, clap it up like this. Right here. This is the day that the Lord has made. If you believe it, say, I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Say, glad in it. This is, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's take it up to another level. Say, this is the day. This is the day. At this time, I want to invite you to remain standing as we ignite our worship service today. We want to begin by repeating our church mission statement. It is there on the screen for your consideration. Our goal at the Oakwood University Church is to become the church that Christ intended. And would you repeat our mission statements together? Our church receives all people. Our church addresses real pain. Our church prepares the next generation. Our church invests in family, and our church prepares people for the next advent of Jesus Christ. Let's repeat our Sabbath covenant found in Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. In the 107th chapter of the Psalms, the Bible says, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. And then it simply says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And listen, friends, I know it's rainy and cloudy outside, but it doesn't say let the redeemed of the Lord think so. It says let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
And so if God has been good, can we just put our hands together and give God a shout of praise in this place, giving him the glory, the honor, and the worship that he deserves today. And so right now, we just lift our hands to God in reverence as we pray today. Father in heaven, again, we're grateful and thankful for Sabbath rest. We're grateful, Lord, to be able to lay aside life's cares and concerns and to dial in acutely into your goodness. And so, Father, we ask today that your spirit would settle powerfully upon this service. Lord, we pray for a transformation that is greater than being entertained. Lord, we're praying that you would fix some things in our hearts and our characters permanently. Bless us to this end, we ask. In the wonderful name of Jesus, let the redeemed say together, amen and amen. We invite you to remain standing as we sing a few songs of thanksgiving and praise to our God today. Hallelujah. Oh, did anybody give, came mm. to give God glory this morning? One of my favorite hymns, it says, To God be the glory. He deserves the glory this morning. And we're going to sing in hymn number 30, 341, To God be the glory. Come on, let's sing it out like a big choir. To God be the glory. To God. To God.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord this morning. He's a worthy God. He's a holy God. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be in his presence on one more day. Listen, we are excited to be in his presence. We came to bless his name. I just came to shout for joy. I came to clap my hands to stop my feet because he's a worthy God. So I don't know about you. We're going to have a great time in the Lord today. Do me a big favor and just clap your hands like this. Yes, sir. The song says, Lord, you're worthy, and we give you the praise. Everybody clap your hands like this. We came to praise his name in the midst of all that goes on in our lives. It's a simple song, but we can sing it along together. Everybody say, Lord, you're worthy. And we give you the praise. Come on, it says, Lord, you're worthy.
Let's give the praise team another hearty amen. Amen. It's prayer time. You may be seated. What if God took a picture of our knees? It reminds me of the story about a Catholic bishop who was attending spring baseball training camp. And he sat down right behind home plate. Well, on this particular day, a player hit a foul-tipped ball that came over the fence and hit the priest on his knees. The players made a beeline to the priest to see if everything was okay. When they got there, the priest said, you don't have to worry about me because the toughest place on a priest's body are his knees. Friends of mine, the problem in the pew of the church today is that many of us have pretty knees. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 10 that Daniel fasted and prayed for 21 days on behalf of God's people. What if God would take a picture of your knees? I have some prayer requests that I want to bring to your attention. Please keep in prayer Charles Matthews, who's in the Huntsville Hospital. Please keep in prayer Jake Nixon, who is out of rehab and is now at home. Let the church say amen. Michael Christopher Capusta is recovering from surgery in the, in the Huntsville Hospital. Let's keep him in prayer. Please keep in prayer Oscar Khan, who was in a major car accident. The funeral for former Oakwood Adventist Academy teacher Kim Trott will be held on April 25 at 2 o'clock p.m. here at the Oakwood University Church. Please keep the entire Gilbert Trott family in prayer. At this time, brothers and sisters, those who are online and in person, I invite you to come to the altar and share your burdens with the Lord Jesus Christ. The song says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry as you come everything to God in prayer. You did not? You did not create me. You did not create me to be. But you created me to worship. You created me to worship. Day so I'ma leave it all right here. My hands are raised because I surrender. My hands are raised because I surrender. Hallelujah. Your will is what's best for me. I worship you because you're Jehovah. And I bow before the King of Kings. Let's take it out. Say, I will trust in you. Say, I will trust. I will put my trust. when we pray even when we can't seem to find all the words to say even when it seems like you don't answer right away Lord we know you hear us you hear us when we pray 
God, we first want to acknowledge who you are. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first. You are the last. You are omniscient. You are omnipresent. You are our God. Next, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that we woke up this morning. Thank you, Jesus, that we have a roof over our heads. Thank you, Jesus, that we have food to eat, clothes to wear. We have a right mind. We have the functionality of our limbs. We just want to say thank you, Jesus. Now, Lord, because we know you hear us, you hear us when we pray, we have prayer requests, God. God, I'm praying for that person, that man or woman that is in the hospital right now, God. That man or woman that is struggling with disease, God, I ask that you be the balm in Gilead. God, I'm praying for that student who needs just one more A to pass that class, just one more $100 to financially clear, God. Just one more signature to graduate, God. I'm declaring and decreeing in the name of Jesus that anybody that is struggling with mental illness, struggling with emotional strains, struggling with their mind, God, I ask that you keep them in perfect peace. God, I ask you be with that parent that is praying for their child to return to you, God. Help them to know that you will not fail, and in due season they shall reap a harvest if they faint not. God, I'm asking that you be with that young boy and that young girl who is trying to make a decision of whether they should live or die, God. I ask in the name of Jesus that you send your charge of angels to them to let them know that they are worth living for. God, we know you hear us. Be with those things that trouble us so deeply we can't even utter it out loud. Be with that couple, be with that marriage, be with those that are considering divorce, that are considering breakup. Help them to know that you are the glue that will keep them together, God. God, we know that you called us for such a time as this. And I ask God that you give us the strength that we need as your people to be the light, to be the salt, to be what you have called us to be in these last days, God. And God, I just already wanna say thank you. And God, I'm asking that your Holy Spirit comes down and takes these feeble words that I've just spoken and make it a sweet, savory God to you. Because God, we know you hear us. You hear us when we pray. And so we say, thank you, Jesus. And it's in his blood that we cover all of our requests, that we recover all of the things that perplex us, that we cover all of our thanks and all of our praise. It is in his name that we pray on this Sabbath. Be with your manservant, Pastor Snell, as he brings the word of life to your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In Jesus' name it is so. Come on, we can sing it out this time a little bit stronger. Come on, say, you did not create me. You did not create me to work. You did not create me to fear. You did not create me to fear. But you created me to worship. You created me to worship. Daily. Daily. So I'm going to leave it all right here. for me I worship you father because you're Jehovah Shira and I bow before the king of kings say no more crying no more complaining I believe your word is true promise that you'll never leave me. Leave me lonely. So this is what I'm going to do. Come on, can you say it? 
church say, I will trust. I will trust in you, Lord. Say, I will trust in you. Happy Sabbath once again, church. I just want to take a moment and just allow us to celebrate something very special that happened on behalf of the Oakwood University campus here in the last week. Uh, many of us are aware that there is a powerful culture of worship and music, and there is a wonderful athletic culture. But first and foremost, aside from our commitment to God, this is an academic school. Can you say amen? Amen. And I want you to know that when you send your child here to Oakwood, that they are not just growing spiritually, but they're going to receive a first-rate education. And that has been evidenced here recently at the 35th Annual Honda All-Star Challenge. It is an academic competition. Amen. It's an academic competition. Uh, where HBCUs from all over the land come, and they operated under the theme, Live Your Dream. And so they had a number of institutions that competed from all over the land. I want you to know that the top four included schools like Morehouse, Spelman, Howard University. But I'm glad to announce today that the first place team came from our very own Oakwood University. And so I want to invite our Honda All-Star team to come forward at this time, led under the direction of Dr. Stephen Lahing, and our students, Janiah, Grayson, Hannah, and Jonathan. So we are absolutely, absolutely proud of you guys and so grateful for the way in which you all represent it. And so I want to just uh, have our coach, Stephen, come and just give us a little bit of an oversight about the competition, who was there, the sights and the sounds. And then one of our students will also just share a little bit of how this affected their journey and their faith and how they had the chance to witness. All right, thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's great to be back home. Um, I am so proud and honored to represent this school and this team. Uh, first, let me introduce, we have uh, Grayson Mejia from Virginia. Uh, we have Janiah Hines from Florida. We have Jonathan Gunthrope from New York. And we have Hannah Browning from Georgia. So um, we and 31 other teams went out to Los Angeles to compete. This has been sponsored by Honda since 1989. And uh, we were blessed. Y'all make sure I have the sequencing correct. We were blessed. We uh, beat Norfolk State. Then we beat Tennessee State. Then we beat Morehouse. And then we beat uh, Howard best two out of three. So with that said, we're also very blessed to bring home $100,000 to the university. Hey, amen, amen. One of the students. All right. Good morning, church. Um, my name is Hannah Browning, and I'm a four-year player on this team, graduating senior. And thank you, thank you. And um, one thing that I can say, and I'm thankful to say that has always been the same every year I've been on this team, is that we are a praying team. 
Um, literally, it doesn't matter from practice to competition. It doesn't matter who's watching. It doesn't matter who's in the room, what team is there, what just happened. Before and after every game, win or lose, we pray. And I'm just so thankful that um, being on this team has taught me discipline, um, spiritual discipline as well, and just honestly community and just um, Christian community. Um, and allowing God to bring the things that we know back to our minds and just giving him the glory for every win. Um, so we thank you all just for um, listening to us. Thank you. Amen. And I forgot, I'm sorry. Um, you know the Adventist Network is strong. Whenever we're out in L.A., we go to Breath of Life Church in Inglewood. Amen. Uh, Pastor Thomas there and his team has really adopted us. They look out for us. That's where we have worship before the tournament begins, and they feed us and they love on us. So we're thankful for that, for when we're away from home. Amen, amen. So Stephen and team, I wish I could say I had a $100,000 matching check today, but I do just wanna take a moment to just uh, say thank you on behalf of the campus, but more specifically on behalf of the church family. We want you to know that you have our support, our prayers, and we just want to send you all out to lunch one day on behalf of the Oakwood University Church. So God bless you, Jonathan. Janiah, Grayson, Hannah, and you too, Dr. Stephen. God bless you. Let's put our hands together one last time for the Oakwood University Honda All-Star Champions. God bless you. Useless revolution is underway. We've been having a good time testifying, praying, and receiving the word of the Lord. But I want you to know that the revolution is not over yet. The Bible says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. The next leg of the journey revolves around our fitness and our health. I invite you to join me starting on May the 5th for an online 30-day fitness campaign under the theme, Excuseless. I want you to join me each week, Sunday through Friday, Sunday at 8 a.m., Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. When you join us online, you're gonna receive a spiritual word. Then our coaches are gonna lead us in a 25-minute online workout, and then we'll conclude the day with my Health Avengers, some amazing chefs, are gonna give us some tools on how to make tasty and affordable and healthy meals that help push us forward. Over the course of this 30 days, you can be a part of a weight loss challenge. And each and every week, there's gonna be a different challenge that allows us to build community around our fitness and our health. For too long, we've been making some excuses about why we're not eating well, about why we're not in shape, about why we're not in perfect health. I need you to know it's time to cancel those excuses. But when you join this leg of the journey, those aches and pains are gonna go away. You're gonna feel better and you're gonna look better as we continue the journey toward becoming excuseless. Praise the Lord. I'm just so excited. We have a diversity of music here at Oakwood University Church, and we saw at Christmas time the chorale did such a great job, and this is our first time for a while having the chorale back, the OUC chorale. Let's give them a hand. We're so excited for Dr. Osterman. We want to thank you for, for having the chorale here this morning. So let's give them a warm welcome. Amen. Thank you. And all I want to say is that we practice on the month that we sing on the fifth Sabbath, this is not the fifth Sabbath because of Alumni Weekend, but we will sing again in June, and anyone who is interested in coming to sing with us, you're more than welcome. Look for the announcement in the newsletter.
Hey family, I know the weekends can be long, they can be hard, and you go through a lot. And so at the end of each week, I want to encourage you to join me and the Breath of Life team for the Weekend Exhale with BOL. We were having these programs on Sunday, but now we want to begin the weekend giving you a little nourishment, a little nurture, giving you a little boost as you start the weekend. Every first Friday, I'm going to be doing a Bible study entitled The Playbook, where we're going to be looking at issues of doctrine and culture through the lens of the scripture. You don't have to guess. You don't have to hope. God is giving us a script in the word because the word is his playbook. 
I want to invite you to join me every second Friday for a show called Point of View, where Gianna and I do a deep dive into issues of marriage, dating, and relationships. Every third Friday, join Pastor Nugent and myself in the Vision Lab, where we're going to be making a heavy deposit into leaders of all ilks. We're going to be pouring into pastors, entrepreneurs, CEOs, ministry leaders, authors, and we're going to be talking about how to build that vision and move it from an idea to a reality. And then on the fourth Friday, we're introducing a new program called What Just Happened? We're going to be looking at whatever the trending topics in culture are. Danita, Pastor Nugent, and myself, we're going to be addressing whatever the trending culture topic is for that week or that month. We're going to be engaging with you, we're going to be answering your questions and trying to figure out how we as believers find our place in the larger culture. We go through a lot during the weekends. You can get overwhelmed. You can get a little stressed out. But before you go into the weekend, take a moment and join us to stop, breathe, and exhale with BOL. How often do you give an excuse for not returning a faithful tithe or offering? Not enough money to pay the mortgage? Not enough to put petrol in our cars? Not enough to buy food? Not enough to pay the utility bills? That's being responsible. God is calling us not just to be responsible, but to be faithful. Earlier this morning on the 21 Days Excuseless Movement, I picked up a quote. It says, fear is what if. Faith is even if. Let me repeat that. Fear is what if. Faith is even if. Let us be intentional about returning a faithful tithe and thank offering. Notice I said return, for often I hear people say paying tithe. To pay indicates a transactional encounter such as a purchase or paying for a service. To return indicates giving back to the owner. With God, we cannot pay for anything, but we are merely returning what is already his. Let me encourage you to be systematic in your obedience to God in returning a faithful tithe and thank offering. Our tithe and offering are not options. It is not a bill to be negotiated and rationed. It is what you do before you begin calculating. So, you return and then you calculate your payments. In excuseless giving, be intentional in returning. Be faithful in returning. Be systematic in returning. Exercise return, then calculate your payments. As the deacons rise in preparation to collect your tithe and offering, Malachi 3.10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Many of you, your houses, I'm sure, has far many windows and maybe one or two doors. Am I correct? And here God is saying he will open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing. So God has promised to bless us. Stop putting a pause on God's blessing. Excuseless giving, sorry, excuseless living is excuseless giving. Be excuseless. Heavenly Father, we thank you 
for bringing us into this house this morning. And as the deacons collect the morning's tithe and offering, oh God, help us to be excuseless in our giving. And that, oh God, whatever is collected may go towards benefiting the furthering of your cause and your mission in saving souls for your kingdom is my prayer in Jesus' name. We just have a quick little worship session. We just want to say thank you to the Lord for all that he's been able to do in our lives. As we continue to give back, can we give him a special type of worship? Come on, I need you to think back over your life. And we're going to sing this simple song. I know that you know it. The song simply says, I just want to praise you right here. Just want to praise you. Forever. Forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. Say for all. Thing you've done for me. We say blessings and glory, blessings and glory, and honor. And honor. They, all they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus for blessing me. Let's say it up this time. Oh, oh, one more time. Say just one. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Anybody excited about this series, Excuseless? Hallelujah. No more excuses. So we're excited to introduce the song this morning. But can we teach you a few things this morning? We want you to participate in this song. If you take me to the sixth there, Dennis, and my tenors say, I am free. I'm, I have been changed. All oh, my tenors in the building, let me see your, your hands. All the tenors. Come on, Pastor Snow. We have some tenors in the building. All right, let me hear the tenors right here. Say, I, I am free, I have been changed. I am free, tenors. I am free, I have been Let's hear all the tenors of the audience. I am free. You sound good. Again, I am free. I hear you, Pastor Snow. <laughs> All right, where are the sopranos in the building? Come with me. I know we have some sopranos in the building. Let me see your hands. All right, well, all my sopranos, you're gonna say, no longer the same. We're not making excuses, so we're no longer the same, amen? Let me hear all the sopranos in the building. This is your part of sopranos right here.
Uh-huh. Don't longer the same. Don't Let me hear the sopranos in the audience right there. Oh, yeah, you sound good. No longer the same. Come on, let's give the Sopranos a hand. All my autos in the building. Autos, everybody's an auto. Lazy Sopranos, right? All right, all you're gonna say is no more. That's it, no more. All right, because you're not making any more excuses. All right, let me hear all the autos in the building right here. Say no more. Pretty simple. No more, right there. No more, no more, no more, Let me hear all the altos in the building. No you sing it. There you go. You sound like a big choir. Good, good. All right, so when we get to your part, we want you to stand on your feet and sing with us as we introduce this song, all right? So we're not making any more excuses, hallelujah. No more excuses, hallelujah. It's a very simple song, it just says, I'm not gonna make more excuses. You can clap your hands with us. You can stand on your feet if you feel the spirit, hallelujah. It's a very simple song. We just came to declare today that we're not gonna make any more excuses. Right here, I'm not. I'm not gonna make more excuses. More excuses. It says today is the day. Today is the day. It says no more losing. No more losing. It says I'm walking by faith. I'm walking by faith. And, I'm and I'm choosing that I'm not gonna make, that I'm not gonna make more excuses. Because we are saved by grace. I am saved. I am saved by grace. He covered all my mistakes. It says, I'm walking by faith, and I'm choosing that I'm not going to make more excuses. Why? Because we're saved by grace. I am saved. He covered all my mistakes. This is your time to declare over your life that you're free from making excuses. We're done making excuses for the year 2024, 2025, 2026. Let me hear all the tenors in the building. It says, I am free. I am free. I have been changed. It says, I am free. I am free. I have Go on, Sopranos, join them. It says, no longer the same.
that you're living an excuseless no life. Come on, watch you stand up to your feet and proclaim it in Jesus' no name. Come on, he says, I can do all things no through Christ who continues to strengthen no me. This morning, no matter what comes your way, you're not making any more excuses. No more excuses in your family. No more excuses in your finances. No more excuses with your health. No more excuses with yourself. Come on, take a moment and worship right there. Everybody in this place, say no more. All the free people in this place uh, says, I am free. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer. No longer. Can we sing it out, church? No more chains. Uh, says, My soul is resting. If you know that's your blessing this morning. people shout hallelujah today. Let's put our hands together and praise for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
I don't know about you, but I'm not making any more excuses. Can you say amen? Amen, amen. Listen, do me a favor. We just want to show some love and appreciation for the Oakwood University Church Chorale that did an amazing job today. Can we give them a hearty amen today? Thank you, Dr. Osterman. I want you to know that they practiced hard, they were diligent in their preparation, and I pray that you would join them so by the time they sing in June, that choir should be twice the size. Come on and say amen. And so we're grateful for their ministry. And friends, I absolutely cannot say enough about our minister of music, Stephen Manders, who not every church has exclusive created content that is developed right here in the body of Christ. And many of us know that from time to time he has some health challenges, but he doesn't make any excuses. His God's strength is made perfect in his weakness. And, and we just thank God for your willingness to push through, to persevere, to produce content that blesses the body of Christ. God bless you, Stephen. We love you and we appreciate your ministry. And so today, friends, we're going to go ahead and jump into the Word. Is that all right? Amen, amen. And so I want to invite you to stand to your feet as we go into our excuseless covenant. And uh, as I look around, I can tell some of us still a little sleepy. It's a little early. I'm usually not up to 1230. So it's a little early. So do me a favor, shake your neighbor and tell him God is still on the throne. Tell the other neighbor, no, you shake him and let him know God is still in control. Amen. Y'all scared to shake him. I, I wish I was there in the pew. I want to shake somebody. Amen. So, so go ahead. We're going to make our excuseless covenant. Uh, it's there on the screen, and we want to just say this not as just words into the air, but there is a covenant that we're making with one another and with God. So let's say it together. Today, I begin the journey toward excuseless living. I recognize that excuses are kryptonite to my soul and cancer to my calling. I make a covenant to stop lying to myself about why I pray so little, fall so often, procrastinate so frequently, neglect my health, live without structure, and leave family outcomes up to chance. I will add focus to essential things and withdraw focus from optional things. I will focus less on what I'm lacking and stand in the promise of God's supply. I will reclaim my time, budget my energy, and withhold oxygen from all excuses. This is the season. The time is now. I feel my help. Let the revolution begin. I claim God's power to become excuseless. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to remain standing as we go to the Word today. I want you to go with me in your Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. And we're going to begin looking together at verse number 1. Exodus chapter 4. And we're going to begin together at verse number 1. When you get there, say, say, Pastor, I'm there. Exodus chapter 4, and we're going to begin together at verse number 1. I want you to know that today's message is not going to resonate with just the religious. This message is only going to impact you if you're planning to walk in faith. So do I have anybody that's planning to walk in faith? I just need to know who you are. I'll, I'll skip over the others. I just want to aim this at those who want it today. Exodus chapter 4. And verse number one, let's hear the word of the Lord together. The Bible says, Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord has not appeared to you. And the Lord said to him, What is in your hand? Matter of fact, he's asking all of us that question today. While you're looking at what you're lacking, God is asking you, what's in your hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it to the ground. So he cast it to the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses did what? He fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, watch this church, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. I want to read emphasis verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. Today, saints, for just a little while, I want to talk to you under the subject, 
take what's yours. Take what's yours. Let's pray together today. Father, I pray today that your spirit would be dominant in this service today. Lord, we pray that heaven's rafters would swing open and that there would be a transformative and life-changing anointing over the preaching of the word, over the hearing of the word, but most importantly, the application of the word. So Lord, I pray that faith will be multiplied exponentially. Lord, would you hide me in the shadows of the cross that Jesus alone might be seen, that Christ alone might be heard. And at the end of our time together, let Jesus alone be praised. Bless us to this end, we ask. In the wonderful name of Jesus, let them that believe say together, amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Again, inviting all our online disciples, Apple apostles, all of our electronic evangelists, if you would share, 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 that others might be able to receive the word today. Again, talking under the subject, take what's yours. You know, friends, as we get into the Word, one of the things you must know is that you can't be excuseless and tentative at the same time. You see, real faith is not docile, it's not passive, it's not ambivalent. In fact, real faith has an edge to it. Real faith approaches things with a confidence that looks arrogant to those who are not convicted by God. Have you ever noticed that the language of Scripture is very militant and unafraid? So that when God spoke to the children of Israel, he didn't go and tell them to request the land. He went and told them to possess the land. Notice that when Jesus spoke to a demon, he never said, will you pretty please come out? The Bible says Jesus commanded them to come out. Notice that Joshua didn't ask the son to be still. Joshua commanded the son to be still. Notice that Jesus didn't request for the storm to cease. Jesus commanded the, son, the storm to cease. And one of the reasons we have so many excuses is that we have not walked in the divine authority made available to us in the Word. And to be clear that our authority is not absolute, but our authority is attached to whatever God has assigned us to do. And the problem, friends, is we're walking around using human metrics, and we're studying likelihoods and probabilities and statistics but the word for somebody today is at some point you've just got to take what's yours. I, I, let me say it this way. I remember coming up, uh, you know, my dad had gotten me a new basketball, and I remember going down to the little ghetto court and the uh, complex where we were living. And Malcolm, I was there playing by myself, but after a while, the older kids came onto the court, and they muscled me off the court, and they took my ball, and I went home empty-handed. And I remember when I got home, my dad asked me what happened to the ball, and I told him they took it. It. And so he asked me, why did they, you let them take it? And I said, Daddy, I asked them for it back, but they wouldn't give it to me. And my dad said something I'll never forget. He said, son, I paid hard-earned money for that ball. And he said, son, you don't ask them for what's yours. You go and take what's yours. And I remember going back down to that court, mumbling under my breath. And when I got there, I gathered all the bass I could in my voice but I need you to know I amended the instruction. I said, my daddy said, you better give me that ball, and if y'all don't, y'all going to have to deal with him. They cursed me out and pushed me around, but guess what? They gave me that basketball, and, and when I got back home, my daddy said, how did you get it back? I said, Dad, I just took what was mine. And, and I came back home with it. And, and, and the word to somebody today is you've got to stop asking for permission. And you've got to take what God has said is yours. 
I need you to know the price has been paid. So stop being scared about your salvation and take what's yours. The Holy Spirit has been offered. Stop wondering if I got anointing and take what's yours. I need somebody to take your favor. I need you to walk in your gifts. Stop walking around scared and ambivalent and take what God has said is yours. Are y'all with me today, friends? And so go back with me, if you don't mind, to Exodus chapter 4 and verse 1. I need you to see some things in the Scripture today. Exodus 4 and verse 1, when you get there, say, Pastor, I'm here. Exodus 4 and 1, the Bible says, Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, The Lord has not appeared to you. Now, friends, I want you to understand that our text today is filled with powerful and relevant truth. But the first thing it teaches, saints, is that excuses thrive when you focus on what happened last time. Let me say it again. That excuses abound when you always focus on what happened the last time. Now, remember, friends, that Moses begins by asking, who am I that I should stand before Pharaoh? And it is then that God assures him of his presence and he guarantees the success of Moses. But then Moses proffers a different excuse. He suggests that he has a credit ability issue and that they would not believe him. Now understand, church, this is a very obstinate claim. It is the equivalent of a child talking back to his parents because in chapter 3 and verse 18, God told Moses that they will heed your voice, but Moses is on the other side saying they won't believe me. And what fuels this thinking with Moses is what happened the last time time he was in Egypt. Now, now, now think back with me, if you will, before Moses fled to Midian. There were a number of things that converged at the same time. You see, Moses had ultimately come to himself. And Hebrews 11 lets us know that Moses, before he left, had already made a break with the culture of Egypt. In fact, the Bible says that Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, and he made Made a choice that I would rather suffer affliction with my people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And understand at this point, there is something radical that has been loose in Moses. There is something edge-worthy that is operating in his soul. And one day it all broiled over when he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew and it showed up in a murderous rage as he killed the Egyptian and buried his body in the sand. And understand, friends, that shortly thereafter, Moses sees two Hebrews fighting amongst one another. And notice that Moses steps in as an arbiter of peace. He comes to try to consolidate and lead his people. And he says to them, why are you fighting one another, seeing as how you both are Hebrews? In other words, friends, Moses is at a place where he is ready to lead a revolution. He's trying to get his people on the same page. He steps into this space with the grace of Nelson Mandela, the edge of Malcolm X, and the courage of Martin Luther King. Moses is ready to take the helm, but notice they don't applaud Moses' leadership. The Bible says they mock his leadership. In fact, they don't applaud Moses. They turn on Moses and say, who are you to be judge and prince over us? Will you now kill us the same way you killed the Egyptian? And understand what happens in Moses' mind. He gets to a place where he tries to lead them, but they mock his leadership. They reject his leadership. They refuse to follow Moses. And understand that when Moses talks to God, the assumption is not just that they won't believe. The assumption is that they won't believe him. 
In other words, church, Moses is at a place where he's saying, God, I've been there, done that, and got the T-shirt. He's saying, Moses, I've already tried to lead, but it didn't work. And the reason that Moses is hesitant is because he's focused on what happened the last time. And friends, can I suggest that you will always be hesitant if you spend your time focusing always on what happened the last time. And see, I need somebody to know that it is folly to project next time based upon what happened the last time. And see, how many of us know that sometimes God will aim you in the direction of your previous failure? Sometimes life has a way of coming full circle and God will place you in that same position to deal with those same people, to face that same difficulty. And he wants the place of your past failure to be the place of your current celebration. And see, there's somebody today that needs to recognize, help me Holy Spirit, that what happened last time won't dictate what happens this time. And see, some of us are wrestling with this because you've lived your life believing that experience is the best teacher. But how many of us know experience is not a better teacher than wisdom? See, see, wisdom is the teacher, experience is the principal's office. See, see, experience is where God sends you when you don't listen to wisdom, but wisdom is learning how God is moving in this season. Are y'all with me today, church? And see, the reason that some of us are paralyzed by failure is because some of us don't realize that failure has a purpose. All right, let me show you this here from the book Gospel Workers. I want you to look at this, this, te this, this text here. Gospel Workers, check it out today. Gospel Workers 269. Listen to what Ellen White says. She says, some God trains by bringing them into disappointment and apparent what? It is his purpose that they shall learn to master what? He inspires them with a determination to prove every apparent failure a success. Often men pray and weep because of the perplexities and obstacles that confront them. But if they will hold the beginning of their confidence steadfast unto the end, God will make their way clear. Success will come as they struggle against the apparently insurmountable difficulties and will, with success will come the greatest joy. Did y'all catch that today, church? In other words, she literally says that sometimes a part of your curriculum is failure. Sometimes a part of your instruction is difficulty. In other words, some of us are going to graduate from Oakwood. Some of us went to A&M. Some of us went to Harvard. But do I have a witness that sometimes you got to graduate from the school of hard knocks? Are y'all hearing me today, friends? And see, one of the things I want to say is you got to be careful how you interpret failure because sometimes you had the right plan you just had the wrong season. Okay. See, see, some of us had the right instinct. You just approached it the wrong way. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. See, I need you to know that Moses had the right instinct. He was just ahead of providence. Moses had the right plan. He just approached it the wrong way because they were not to defeat Egypt with hand-to-hand -hand combat. God was going to send his right hand and strong arm to get them the victory. In other words, friends, I need somebody to know the reason certain things failed was because we were approaching them maybe the wrong way. Or maybe we showed up a little early and we were there at the wrong time. And see, I need somebody to know that sometimes the wrong time doesn't mean that it was a wrong decision. 
In other words, it was not wrong for you to try to seek promotion, but it was wrong to try to get it by favor banking and backslapping. God wanted to do it in a way that he got to glory. It was not wrong for you to try to get the house, but maybe you were just a year ahead of God's divine timing. Bro, it wasn't wrong for you to take your shot with that girl, but maybe she needs a little time to get over yesterday, but she might be ready a little time from now. It was not wrong for you to try to start the business, but sometimes you were just ahead of divine timing. And the hard truth to embrace is that sometimes failure is what happens when good intentions are done in bad timing. Sometimes things fail because I tried the right thing, but I approached it the wrong way. And see, sometimes God is taking you back to the place of previous humiliation. And he's saying, this time, I want you to approach it a little bit more prayerfully. This time, I don't want you to lean according to your own devices. He says, this time, don't try to box me into your schedule. I need you to be still and let me be God over your life. Are you hearing me today, friends? Can I give you a contemporary example of this? Do you realize that our president, Joe Biden, he ran for president in 1988, but it was discovered that he plagiarized a speech from a British politician and he had to drop out. Then he ran again in 2008, but he came up against a providential figure in Barack Hussein Obama. But God had an ordained season where somebody had to stand up against Trump and he had to put a chocolate girl named Kamala next to him in the White House. In other words, it had to be the right time and the right season and with the right people. And God is saying to somebody, don't be afraid of what happened last time because you're in the right season this time. And there are some that are afraid to revisit the vision because of what happened last time. Some are afraid to retake the class because of what happened last time. Some are afraid to get active in church because of what happened last time. But I need to free somebody to know that what happened last time won't determine what happens this time. Are y'all with me today, church? Second thing that our story teaches us this afternoon is this, is that when God is calling you, Just worry about your part. Let let me say it again. When when God is calling you, friends of mine, any called people in the room today, when God is calling you, don't worry about all the logistics. Don't worry about all the details. Just worry about doing your part. Why are you saying that, Pastor? Because I need this truth to get down in somebody's spirit. When, when God brings something to your attention, when God puts something on your heart, I need you to stop focusing on all the data and the details and what ifs. All you got to focus on is what God told you to do. Because how many of us know that God will never ask you to cook without buying the groceries? that God will never send you to a field that he has not already prepared you to be able to work. I need somebody to know that before God uh, prepares the one that has been assigned, God prepares the assignment. Are y'all with me today, church? See, let, let me show it to you, Patriarchs and Prophets here, page 245. I want you to see this real quick. I need you to catch this. Literally, she says, the elders of Israel, were taught by angels that the time of their deliverance was near and that Moses was the man whom God would employ to accomplish his work. Angels instructed Moses also that Jehovah had chosen him to break the bondage of his people. Oh God, some of y'all missed y'all shout. Do y'all realize that on one side of the visible, Moses is complaining and saying, Lord, they won't believe me if I show up. But on the other side of the visible, God had already sent angels to create a soft landing spot and had prepared the way for Moses to succeed. And see, I need you to notice something about this church. I need you to take note of the fact that God sends angels to the elders He doesn't send angels to convince the entire camp. 
God just sends angels to convince the influential ones that will help Moses get the vision into reality. And the reason that's important is because some of us only see God when there is consensus, when everybody applauds your vision and everybody stands behind your initiative. But I need somebody to know that God is never going to convince everybody. He's just going to awaken some influential and critical people to help you get to where he's ordained for you to be. In other words, God is not going to convince all of your co-workers that you need to have the position. God is just going to alert the boss that you are the one that needs to be there. In other words, sis, God ain't going to send 40 men to ask you out like the bachelorette. He's just going to send the right man with the right intentions at the right time. God ain't going to convince everybody on the Lord, he's just going to get the influential ones to help move the vision across. You don't need everybody to cheer you on. You just got to let God alert the influencers to help his purpose become clear. Are y'all with me today, church? But the larger idea is, oh God, this is too good to me, is that Moses is on one side resisting. He's on one side of the visible talking about all the reasons why he can't, but God is on the other side and he's already worked out the reasons and the obstacles in Moses' way. In other words, while Moses is over here trying to figure it out, God has already gone ahead of him and worked that thing out. Are y'all with me today, church? And see, I need somebody to understand this critical truth that God never sends you where he hadn't already been. I need you to know that when you walk in faith, you're not creating the path. You're walking in the path that has been established and prepared for you by God. Are y'all hearing me today, church? And I need you to know that this is not the only time that God does this. There is actually a trend in Scripture of God preparing the way for those that he calls to do a very specific work. Do you all remember the story of Jacob and Esau when Jacob heard that Esau was near? That night he wrestled with God, but before he did, he sent gifts to pacify e Esau. He sent the wives and the kids ahead because he was bracing himself to be slaughtered. But God had already gone ahead head and removed all the poison from Esau's heart so that by the time they met one another, Esau hugged Jacob and poured gifts and blessings upon him and his tribe. Do y'all remember in Acts chapter 9, after Saul, who became Paul, got converted, he was told to go into a house and wait for a man named Ananias. But God showed up to Ananias and said, I want you to go to Straight Street and see a man named Saul. And Ananias Ananias said, that man has done great harm to your church. But God said to Ananias, he is my chosen vessel. So that by the time Ananias gets to Paul, he finds an open-minded Paul. And Paul finds a willing Ananias. And it is there that he receives his sight and begins his mission. Y'all start not here yet. Acts chapter 10, there was a man named Cornelius, a Gentile who loved God. And God told Cornelius to send a delegation to Peter. But but he knew Peter would not receive him because he was a Gentile. And so God gives Peter a vision of unclean food and meat, and he tells him to engage. But the vision was not about food. It was about people so that he would not call man uncommon and unclean. And as soon as the vision ends, Peter's delegation was knocking at the door so that God prepared them to receive him before they ever got there. And what I'm saying to somebody, church, is that the same way God prepared Esau to receive Moses, the same way God prepared Ananias to receive Paul, the same way God prepared uh, 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 Peter to receive Ananias, is the same way that God doesn't leave any of your circumstances up to chance. I need you to know the God that knows the end from the beginning, and the beginning from the end has already run ahead of you. He's already cleared a path. He's already made a way. So all you've got to do is worry about your part. Are y'all hearing me today, friends? 
In other words, I need somebody to understand that when God tells you to fill out the application, don't spend a whole lot of time worrying about who's going to read the application. Just do your part and fill out the application. Don't spend a whole lot of time waiting on who is going to be the one to uh, financially clear you. Just do your part and fill out the aid and watch God do the rest. In other words, I need somebody to stop waiting for everything to come together and just do your part in obedience. And God is going to do the rest. And while I'm here, can I tell you, stop worrying about when Jesus is going to come. Just do your part and be ready whenever he comes. Because if he went to prepare a place, thank God he's preparing a people and I'm a prepared person. It doesn't matter when I get to the place. Are y'all hearing me today, church? Third thing I want to say real quick is this, is that never let opinions become your master. This is blowing my mind, Karen, because at this point, help me, Lord, calm down. He's worried more about what they might say than what God is saying. God already told them that, listen, I'm going to set it up to where they will heed your voice, and yet Moses sits there arguing with the one who made him. And see, the problem with Moses is that he is so beholden to what his people might have to say to him that he is about to miss out on a miracle. In fact, literally, he, he, and there are some of us that are at a place that we cannot hear what God is saying because we're so contaminated by what people might say. And it's an interesting thing, church, because Moses, his fear is not that it's going to fail. His fear is what are they going to say if it fails? Because some of us would rather endure the scorn of God than the scoffing of people. And what happens, friends, is that over time, outward opinions become an idol. I need you to get that your God is not just the one you pray to or the one you lift hands toward. Your God is the one whose approval you seek. In other words, who is the one that you're worried about the most? Are you worried more about what man says, about what God says? And there are some of our students that chose a certain major simply because your parents or grandparents said, this is what you ought to do. That there are some of us that will resist the gospel appeal each week because you're scared about what somebody's going to think or what problem they think that you're going to have. There are some of us that are afraid to embrace all that God has called us to because we're afraid of what people are going to think about the way it is that we are moving. But do I have at least 12 folk that are living to hear two words? You just want to hear Jesus say, well done, good and faithful servants. And this is interesting, church, because Moses is absolutely missing the moment. Do you realize that your calling is a compliment? No, no, we're, we're missing it, church. Your, your calling is the highest compliment that God can ever place upon you. In other words, Moses is missing this moment, Ross, because God literally bypasses everybody in Egypt. He looks over everyone in Israel. He looks over everyone in Midian, and he puts the assignment on him. And what I'm saying, friends, is you got to see it as a compliment because how many of us know we are not a divine necessity, you're a divine preference? Oh, Jesus. See, I need you to know that God doesn't need you. God just wants you. 
He just prefers you. He just likes having you around. God just has a bend in your direction. See, you got to get it out of your head that you're a divine necessity because when you think you're a necessity, when you think you're a necessity, you try to bargain with God. See, and you come to God with terms and conditions. But how many of us know we ain't got no leverage with the Almighty God? We run around telling God that I'll do this if you do that. But how many of us know God doesn't make recommendations? And God doesn't make bills, deals with his own creation. Are y'all hearing me today, church? And I just need you to know that God called you not because he needed you. He just wanted you. Oh, God. I'm going to shout on this all by myself. God just prefers you. God just likes talking to you. God just likes being around you. Ah, anybody grateful that God just loves your company? Y'all, y'all not hearing this today. Ah, see, y'all ain't never praised God like this before. We praise God because he loves us. But how many of us know love is his nature? But he likes you because it's your preference. Can anybody praise him that he likes me? He likes talking to me. He likes walking with me. He likes being with me. He likes calling me his own. I know he loves the world, but does anybody believe he just likes me? Oh, God. He likes having you in close proximity with him. Y'all not hear me today. Uh, the young folk will get it. See, how many of us know on social media that when you post something, all likes are not created equal? Uh, in other words, that you may get a lot of likes, but when the certain person likes it, it means just a little bit more. And what I'm saying is there may be a lot of people that like you, but when God says, I like you, it ought to mean a little bit more. It ought to carry a little more weight. It ought to fuel you a little bit longer. So I thank God for all of your likes. But can anybody praise him that he likes us? Are y'all hearing me today, friends? Listen, fourth thing this teaches us is that excuseless people use what they have. Okay, it's going to get a little rough right in here. So God says to Moses, what's in your hand? Okay, the larger question is, Moses, what do you have at your disposal? Moses, what are your available assets? Moses, what do you have that if it's submitted to me, I can use it to change the entire trajectory of your life. Moses, what's in your hand? And Moses says, all I got, Lord, is the rod. And it's crazy because the Bible says that he, Tamar tells him to cast it on the ground and the rod becomes a serpent. And what God is showing Moses is this, is that supernatural things can be done with ordinary things that come from obedient hands. Because up to this point, Moses assumes that this rod can only be used for one of three or four purposes. Sometimes these rods would come with a hook or a lasso on them, and he would use his rod to pull sheep from straying and back into alignment. Maybe Moses would use his rod to be able to fight off wolves or mountain lions that threaten the well-being of the flock. Or maybe as Moses walked through uneven terrain, he would use this rod to help maintain his balance. Maybe, church, Moses has had this rod for a minute. Maybe he's been walking with it for 45 years. He didn't realize that it had any miraculous potential. But when Moses began to use this rod with obedient hands, God began to do supernatural things. So friends, this same rod that he used to fight wolves, this same rod 
that he used to discipline sheep. This same rod that he used to keep his balance was the same rod that he dipped in the water in front of Pharaoh and the waters became like blood. It is this same rod that he pointed toward the heavens and all of a sudden hail began to fall out of the sky. God took that same rod when he struck the ground, lice began to overtake the land. It is this same rod that he points toward the east and armies of locusts come and destroy the harvest. It is with this same rod that he points toward the Red Sea and it opens up and the folk walk through on dry ground. With this same rod, he strikes the rock and water comes out and satisfies the people. But I need you to know that God didn't do every miracle using the rod. Sometimes he used ashes. Sometimes Moses pointed his hand. Sometimes he stretched out his arms and the miracle took place. And why didn't God always use the rod? Because he never wanted Moses to become superstitious about the rod. He was never supposed to think the idol was the one that did it because the miracle was not in the rod. The miracle was in obedient hands. And when you have obedient hands, your pen will create miracles. Your hammer will create miracles. Your computer will create miracles. Your camera can create miracles. Your makeup stick can create miracles. I need you to know God does miracles. When those use what they have with obedient hands. Why am I preaching this? Because if you really about that life, young person, you're not going to sit around waiting for everything to fall in place and every objection to be removed. You're just going to put your obedient hands to work. So if you're really about that content creation life, you ain't going to wait till you got all the equipment in your garage. You're going to take your iPhone and a gimbal, and you're going to walk around here and make masterpieces. If you're serious about your art, you don't wait till somebody gives you a scholarship. If you're serious, take your paintbrush and the side of an abandoned building. Oh, I didn't say that out loud. Take some paper and a parchment and create your masterpieces with it. I need somebody to know that there's a brother here at Bridge Street Mall that plays the sax. Saxophone. He ain't sitting around waiting to be discovered by Quincy Jones. He's just going to take what's in his hands and God is going to bless the efforts. There is some theology major waiting on me to give them a chance to preach here. But if you can't preach in a nursing home, if you can't preach in a jail, if you can't preach at a street corner, you won't never stand in this spot. You've got to use what is in your hands. Are y'all hearing me today, church? And the question for somebody is what's in your hands? What's at your disposal? What are the resources that you are neglecting and overlooking and bypassing because you feel like you don't have enough? I need you to know that God is faithful so that whatever you have is enough. See, David realized I'll get killed if I try to put on Saul's armor. So I'm just going to use the slingshot that was already in my hands, and I'm going to use that to kill Goliath. When they were in the wilderness with Jesus and there were 5,000 men, not even including the women, Jesus just asked Philip, what do you have? And Philip just found a little boy's lunch and God took the two fish and five loaves and he fed over 10,000. All the little boy did was submit whatever it is that he had was in his hands. And what I need somebody to know is that little still becomes much when you place it in the master's hands. And I'm still trying to awaken the dreamers. I still pray, help me, Holy Ghost. I need you to know that a pen in obedient hands is going to write the next bestseller. That some equipment in obedient hands is going to record the next platinum album. I need somebody to know that some medicine in obedient hands is going to give us the cure for cancer. I, I wish I had some believers in this room that a Bible in obedient hands is going to help tear down the kingdom of darkness, but we don't need more equipment. We don't need more uh, resources. We don't need more support. We just need some obedient hands to do what God has called us to do. 
So watch this. Last thing. I need you to know, last thing this teaches us is that excuseless people aren't tentative. <laughs> so the word series church says that God says, what do you have? He said, I got a rod. <laughs> so God says, take the rod, throw it on the ground. And the Bible says that the rod becomes a serpent. Now, we're not told what kind of snake it is, but that joint is so vicious that the word says Moses runs to the other side of the mountain from it. Now, I ain't gonna lie, because I'm trying to figure out, church man, would I have had Moses' faith? Because when, when, when it turns into a serpent, I ain't gonna lie, conversation over. I'm like, Lord, just kill me because we ain't going, like, going out like that. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying, church? So, so God says, I want you to take, and see, God doesn't say, all right, Moses, I'm going to turn it into a rod. Then you pick it back up. God says, Moses, I need you to pick it up while it's still a snake. See, y'all acting bougie and brand new only because y'all know how the story is going to end. But I need you to see yourself in Moses' shoes. Because, see, one of the things you're going to learn about the journey of faith is that God ain't never trying to make it comfortable. He never tries to make it convenient. He creates a scenario where you're going to have to depend upon him every step of the way. So I need you to see, but I'm trying to say, if I'm Moses, how am I going to manage this? Because Moses runs because this thing is so vicious. You see, because even if a shepherd's rod was usually about six or seven feet long, when it hits the ground, it means the snake is at least that big. So, so God is saying, I want you to go grab the snake by the tail. So why y'all acting brand new? When Moses walks over to the snake, what he's hearing is this. Oh, oh, you still love the Lord, right? He's hearing this and he's seeing this. And God is saying, go grab it right here. Are y'all with me, church? Do, do you see the conundrum that, that Moses is in? And it's crazy because the word says that he runs from it. In other words, the, the rod is his, but he's running from it. The rod is a part of his destiny, but he's running from it. The rod is going to help open doors, uh, but he's running from it. The rod is intimidating him. The rod is frightening him. The rod is scaring him, and he's running. Go ahead and cut this off. Some of y'all done got distracted and lost y'all way. <laughs> And it's crazy because he's running from the very moment that he prayed for. See, how many of us know that sometimes destiny disguises itself as destruction? And the same way Moses runs from the serpent, some of us are running from the opportunities that we prayed for because it is intimidating, it's not easy, it's not convenient, it's as scary as a rattlesnake to some of us. Are y'all here in this church? And then on top of this, God don't give Moses no easy way out. He doesn't say grab him by the head. He doesn't say grab him by the body, which is still not a good idea. But he says grab him by the tail. Now, how many of us know like the worst thing you can do to any animal is grab him by the tail? 
In other words, he is literally asking Moses to almost commit a suicidal act. I'm like, Lord, I, give, me, give, me, give me give me, something. Let him grab him by the head. I mean, it's still not a good idea, but if you can get him by the head, you might have a chance. But he says, Moses, I want you to take it. I want you to take him. Oh, God. I want you to take him by the tail. That word take in the Hebrew is the word akon. It doesn't just mean to caress. It does not mean to touch. It does not mean to just uh, uh, reach out and grab. It literally means to take possession of. It means to take authority of it. It means to take ownership of it. See, the problem is it's a snake, but it's still his rod. And what God is saying to Moses is, I need you to take what's already yours. And see, I need you to know that he's not just giving Moses an instruction. He's giving Moses a strategy. He's saying, Moses, don't try to sneak up on it. Moses, don't hesitate. Moses, don't be gentle with it. Because if you reach out and you're hesitant, it's going to bite you. If you roll up gentle, it's going to bite you. If you walk up on it passive, it's going to bite you. If you walk up like you don't belong, it's going to bite you. So he says, when you walk up on this snake, I need you to act like it's already yours. I need you to act like it's already done. I need you to take possession of what's already yours. And I guess Moses has just made up his mind that if I disobey God, I'm going to die. If I hit the snake, I'm going to die. So if I'm going to die, I might as well die serving the Lord. Do I have any folk today that said with them it's going to be trouble? If I disobey God, it's going to be trouble. But if I'm going to have trouble, it ain't going to be with y'all snakes. I'm going to obey the voice of God. And I can see Moses walking up on the snake. He's bracing himself for a bite, but he doesn't reach out tentative. He just takes what is his. And when he grabs the tail, it becomes a rod again. And the miracle happens when he operates with obedient hands. What's the word for somebody today? I need you to stop walking around tentative and ambivalent and afraid. And I need you to take possession of what God has already shown you. Are y'all hearing me today, church? In other words, brother in the balcony, stop staring at her across the way. God has put, your, put her in your sight. So after the benediction, go ahead and step to her. Take your shot. Take what God is saying. Oh, y'all not hearing me today? In other words, church, don't sit around waiting on somebody to give you a scholarship. Walk into the financial aid office. Say, I'm not leaving until you bless me. Take what's yours. There is somebody on a job interview today. Don't walk all in there with your knees buckling. Walk in with some Holy Ghost swagger. Act like you belong in there. And after you're done with the interview, tell the employer, cancel all other interviews. Your right person is right here. Take what's yours. God has shown you the house. The finances are not in order. The credit is not great, but stay with the process. I need you to take what's yours. Stop sitting around here, admiring everybody else's marriage. Husband, take your wife. Wife, take your husband and walk to the altar and call on God and take what's yours. There is somebody worried about failing health. Don't just sit there and complain. Get some walking shoes. Get a bottle of water. Get your exercise gear. Start moving and take what's yours. You're worried about, can I receive the Holy Ghost? It's already available. 
take what's yours. And I just need some folk in this room to know that it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It's not a matter of God delivering it. It's a matter of you taking it and occupying what God has said is yours. If you're going to take what God has promised, put your hands together and praise the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today. And see the problem. I'm nervous because I know only a certain section of the population are going to see this and hear it and walk in it. For too many of us, all you heard was theology. All you heard was concepts. But even though you know it was accurate, you still don't see it as truth. You feel like it only applies to others, to the elite, to the select. But I pray that you leave convinced that he, he loves you, but he also likes you. He just prefers you. That he put that call upon you to lead the school, to lead the church, to be the deacon, to be in that ministry. He called, it was a compliment. God overlooked some others and said, I, I want you. You're not a necessity, you're, you're, you're my preference. And see, I need you to know, favor comes with those that he prefers. I wish that we had a militant church that wasn't so docile and passive, but they stood on the promises of the word as sure as your feet stand on the floor underneath it. I wish there was a church that claimed the power of the Holy Spirit the same way you claim the coupons from Dillard's or Belk. I wish there was a church that feared more the disapproval of God than the disapproval of people. Because as long as you're beholden to men's thoughts, opinions, their perceptions, you will never be able to do the good and perfect will of God. And there is somebody that you're saying, I'm, I'm waiting on God. God is saying, nope, what's in your hand? God is saying to somebody, you're not waiting on me. I'm waiting on you. And, and, I, and I'm praying that even as they minister in this song, that there are some who still remain that have enough faith to say, man, whatever God has for me, I'm not going to wait for the rattle to stop shaking. I'm not going to wait for the serpent to close his mouth and hide his fangs. I'm not going to wait for the, the serpent to become a rod. I'm going to reach out and I'm going to take possession of it. I want you to meditate on what you need to do and how you need to be moving. As they meditate upon this song, there's somebody that needs to leave this place saying, Pastor, I hear the word. More than that, I hear the voice of the Spirit and I'm going to take what God has said is mine. Hallelujah. Come on, all those who are ready to reap the blessings of the Lord. Listen, can we give him a praise right here? Faithful. 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 Faithful is our God. Let's call his name, say faithful. Faithful. If you got a little bit of faith. Faithful. Faithful is our God. Come on, all those who believe he's faithful. faithful. Say faithful. Faithful. I know my Savior to be faithful. 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 Come on, all those who are ready to reap. I'm reaping. I'll take back what the devil stole. And I'll rejoice today. For I shall recover it all. Say, yes, I rejoice. For I shall recover it all. Come on, all those who can believe it, let's say faithful. He's a faithful God. Call his name, say faithful. 
faithful. He's faithful to save. Come on, whatever you ask of the Lord, say faithful. He'll be faithful to complete it. Call his name, say faithful. Faithful. Sing it out, say I'm reaping. If you're ready to reap, take it back. And I rejoice today. For I shall recover it all. Say yes, I rejoice today. For I shall recover it all. Say yes, I rejoice. For I shall recover it all. Say yes, I rejoice. For I shall. Great is thy faithfulness. Right here, morning. morning my Lord. New mercies. If you know that all that you needed, thy hands have provided. Let's sing it out. Say, great is thy faithfulness. Lord, unto me. Come on, church. Can you help us sing it right here? Let's say, great is. Come on, let's think of his faithfulness this afternoon. Every single day that you wake up. to say all that I've needed great is thy faithfulness right now as a church we're standing to our feet We're at the end of this first week of a revolution. We're not using that word with as hyperbole, but we're praying that there will be a revival in the body of Christ not seen in ages. And a part of that revolution begins when I remove all of the excuses from my life. There is somebody today that your issue is not a lack of support, lack of resources, lack of help. For some, there is just a lack of courage to reach out and take possession of that which God has already made available. And so my prayer today is that today's message is not concluded with us saying benediction and us saying it was good or it wasn't. I pray that there is a call to action for that person. You've been vacillating too long about whether or not you're gonna write this book, start this business, start the invention process, whether or not you're gonna write the song, whatever it is, I'm saying, no, God has already given you the vision. He's already put it in your heart. At some point, you just gotta take what's yours and embrace it and walk in faith. At some point, you, you gotta stop being wishful and start being intentional. And I want to just be a person of of faith that can be declared. 
I want to be a person of faith that can be demonstrated and seen. How many of us believe the word of the Lord today? My last appeal today is this. There is somebody that when it comes down to salvation, when, when the conversation about you being saved comes up, there's always a lot of uncertainty. I'm not sure, it's not clear. But Jesus said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes would not perish but have everlasting life. I need you to know that his grace is more than abundant. He has made a, an overwhelming abundance of grace available for the salvation of all mankind. But at some point, you just got to simply reach out and say, I'm going to take what's mine. And at some point, friends, you've, you've got to do it while there is yet time. Had a strange experience this week. It's crazy. I got to travel here the early part of the week, and I had my flight booked, but I wanted to make sure I was here for the early morning service. So, you know, I took a minute, and, and I, I looked for a later flight. And so I, I booked this later flight, but then I realized there were some complications. And so I tried to go back to the earlier flight. And I need you to know that within the five minutes it took me to get back, Somebody was already in my seat. And what I'm saying to somebody today, friends of mine, is that there are going to be a lot of folk in heaven occupying seats that somebody got up and left empty. And what I'm saying to somebody is while it is yet time, you need to claim the seat that God had your name on. So there's somebody today, what you need to take hold of is salvation. You need to take hold of the gift. While it is yet time, you need to embrace and walk in the ways of righteousness. And some of us need to symbolize that decision by making the choice to be in one of the next baptisms at this church. So if you're in the balcony, you're on the floor, wherever you are, as the Spirit of God is moved upon your heart, you want to be in one of the next baptisms at this church, just do me a favor, tell your neighbor, excuse me, step out of the aisle, come on down to the front, give me your hand, give Jesus your heart. If the Spirit of God is moving upon you, not if, as the Spirit of God is moving upon you, I want to invite somebody into fellowship to embrace all of the claims of the gospel, to be again receiving the good news individually and personally, won't you come? If you're watching online, you can go to www.oucsda.org forward slash connect card and you can make that same decision online. But I need you to know there is an open seat. The price has been paid by the Savior. I need you to claim what's yours. God bless you, brother. I love that you're walking strong with it. God bless you, my friend. Way to walk strong. God bless you. There's somebody else. There's somebody else. You, you need to walk strong. You need to come take possession of it. I'm gonna call somebody. Don't be tentative. Don't, don't be anxious about it. Don't spend any time looking around or worry about what somebody's gonna think. If this is your day and your hour, I want you to come on down and lay claim and take hold of your salvation. If you're here today, won't you come? 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 I want you to come. I want you to step strong. I want you to step with boldness and courage. Don't be ambivalent. Don't be afraid. Make the choice with confidence. There are one or two more that need to say yes to Jesus. I want to close the service. I just want to give an opportunity for another group, another two or three, to say yes to the Lord. If you're online, OUCSDA.org forward slash connect card. Make that choice. Why don't you make that choice? Why don't you make that choice? Do me a favor, musicians. Bring it all the way down for me. So do me a favor, church. Let's just take a moment of silence. And I want you to let the Lord speak to you about where you need to lay claim, where you need to operate with authority, how to take what's yours. For somebody, you're worried about what happened last time. And excuses thrive when you focus on last time. But that has no bearing on what God is going to do this time.
Holy Spirit. For anyone who is still in darkness or uncertainty, would you set that captive free? So these next 60 seconds, you're on the floor, on the balcony. You need to be baptized for the remission of your sins. You need to be rededicated. You need to join the church of God. I need you not to posture. I need you don't, to not wait until somebody else is in your seat. Child, teenager, young adult, salt and pepper, doesn't matter. You want to say yes to the Lord. I call you in Jesus' name. And we receive you in Christian love and fellowship. Won't you come? If you're on the balcony, you can come. On the floor, you can come. But you're just letting the Lord deal with you, speak to you. God bless you, sister. God bless you. Way to step strong. God bless you. We receive you in Christian love and fellowship. There are some others. I've spent a lot of time praying for you this week. And I want you to step with courage and boldness. Won't you come? There are one or two more. And I promise you, I'm not going to drag it to 1.30. I just want to give you a chance to receive the best gift. And honestly, this shouldn't even be something you're given a second thought. Price has already been paid at Calvary. The gift is eternal life. And all you got to do is get in line and say, I want it. I believe by faith that his grace is sufficient. So if you're online, you can make that decision to say, I want to join through baptism here at Oakwood, or we can point you in the direction of a good Bible-based Advent church. And in these next 30 seconds, you want to say, I want to join the church through baptism, rebaptism, or through profession of faith. Maybe you want to say, I need to get in some Bible studies to get settled into the Word so I can know what it is I believe. The Spirit is calling on you. Won't you come? Come quickly. Come boldly. Come with courage. That same swag you used to walk into the club with, I need you to walk down here with that same energy. If you're here, I'm going to pray in a few moments. I'm going to let it go. Say it all that I'm going to say. Now I just want to give you an opportunity to respond. God bless you, sister. Praise God. Saw you coming. Saw you coming. Saw you coming. Praise God. We receive you. Christian love and fellowship. There's a man or two that needs to come. And brother, I need you to know you're born male. You're reborn man. Because you know what a man does? He says, I'm going to stand on my own two feet. And I'm not going to look for permission from the crowd. At some point, I'm going to leave my boys aside and I'm, I'm going to do what I need to do, what the Spirit has been calling me to do. So I'm calling one or two men that need to join this group and say yes to Jesus. It is in Christ's name I call you brother or sister. Step bold with courage. God bless you, man of God. God bless you, man of God. God bless you, man of God. I love the way you step. Love the way you move. God bless you. We receive you in Christian love and fellowship. One or two others, maybe there's a family that needs to say yes. We receive you, no judgment here. 
we are all sinners saved by grace. We just said yes a little earlier than you did. Can I get my prayer words? Can you intercede? Will you intercede? Student, maybe you need to do this. You know what you got to go back home to. You need to go back home different. You need to go back home convinced. The Spirit of God is moving upon you. I want you to come. Online, in person, doesn't matter where you are. We call you in Jesus' name and we receive you. I want you to come. Even as I'm praying, you can still say yes. You can still say yes. Father in heaven, we're grateful and thankful that you are eviscerating all of our excuses. So, Father, I'm praying that you would not just allow us the privilege of hearing truth, but give us the strength to walk in the truth of your word. Lord, there is somebody today that needs to stop worrying about all the planning and just say, Lord, I'm going to do my part. I know you've already worked it out on the other side of the visible. Just help me to be ready. Help me to just do my part. There is somebody that if they're going to become excuseless, they just got to use what they have. May they use the gift that they have, the influence that they have, the support that they have. And Lord, help them to know that as they use what they have, they will prove themselves able to be stewards of more and you'll give more. But Lord, would you sweep the tentative, ambivalent, passive, scary spirit out of this church? Help us to be militant and unafraid believers who stand on your word as firmly as the ground underneath our feet. Help us to move with a different attitude and a different energy and a certainty. May we not be if Christians, but when Christians. And show us, Lord, how to possess what you've put in front of us. Help us to not have loud mouths, but obedient hands. And as you do it, Lord, we will be super intentional about giving you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. For we pray these things in the matchless name of Jesus. Let the excuseless amongst us shout hallelujah, amen, and amen. Let's give God a praise. Those who came. There is congratulations. There are uh, rejoicing in heaven and, and on earth because people have made their calling an election. Sure, there, there is realizations that we are coming to. There are those who have made a stand in the chat. I see your comments saying, I'm going to lay claim to what God has said is mine. Yeah. Uh, there's realizations that the business should have started long ago, that you should have written the book, that you have been uh, uh, procrastinating in terms of going back to school and God has told you this is what I would have for you to do and we love it we love it but there are also other kinds of comments in the chat that I've seen uh, comments about the moment that is being experienced in person the comments about those that are coming down and we are thankful for them comments uh, around the atmosphere that had been created so that someone can say yes to Jesus I just want to make sure that we leave it open for those of us online. Yeah. 
I, I, I want you to recognize that with five, over 5,000 devices connected, there's only a handful of us that are commenting. I want you to realize that, my online family, that there are those who are silent because they too are in the valley of decision. Yeah. And we want to give reverence to that moment that they are in right now. There is a link on the screen. I mean this. Several of you have hit that link in the last week or two. And you've let us know your intention in terms of Bible study, in terms of rebaptism, in terms of bap getting baptized afresh. This is the moment. This is what this whole thing has been created for. And we do not take it lightly. This is the time. Just as poignantly as God called those that you saw come in the last few seconds of the appeal online just a second ago. God is calling someone who is sitting at the steering wheel pulled over on the side of the road. Someone who is in the bread aisle watching on their phone. Someone who is on the treadmill. Someone who is sitting on their couch recognizing that this is your moment. Yes. Don't miss it. Yes. God is speaking to you. He's speaking to you. And we're here, all we're here to do right now is to, is to look, that, that's the only assignment Pastor Snell has given us, yes. is to look right at the camera right now, one-on-one, yes. -on -one, and say, God is waiting for you. Yes. He's created this entire experience for you to remove the excuses that have held you back from saying yes to his salvation. He's waiting for you. Yes. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Will you go to that link? Or are there excuses? Hmm. Hmm. Will you go to the link and fill it out and take that first step? Will you put in the chat, it's me, so that we can rally around you? We talked about doing the hard part first this morning in our devotional. This is the hard part, to make that first step. God's been chasing after you. You know it for weeks. Will you come? OUCSDA.org slash Canuck Card. Pastor Paul is going to yeah. pray for you in just a moment. But I just want, don't, oh my word. Just don't click. see it yeah. as someone else. Oh yeah, don't get up. You're going to lose your seat. It could be you. This is not collective. This is not let us all think about yourself in this moment and make a decision. Pastor Paul. Father, I begin every time that I speak by saying, Father, these are your people. And Jesus Christ, this is why you died. And Holy Spirit, this is your time. And so, Spirit, this is your time. This is your time. Our theme song has been No More Excuses. Now is the time. And instead of being worried about what people will say, what people might say, Lord, help us to focus on what you have said. And you said, that if we confess our sins, that you're faithful <laughs> and just, not just to forgive us our sins, but to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You said, if we come to you, you will in no wise cast us no matter what we've done, no matter how far we've gone, no matter how many times we have uh, failed to do what you've asked us to do, no, no matter how many times we've fallen, 
you say just take my hand and clicking on that connect button is taking the hand that's the hard part god just clicking on that link but lord i'm praying for that individual in the chat yes god who recognizes that they're running this is from it. their salvation. This is, it. this is it. They're running from it. But Lord, just, just, just give them, just, as they even contemplate reaching out to you, give them the strength, Holy Spirit, embolden them to click and to say, it's me, help me. They, they, even just the word help and Lord as they claim you you send battalions of it not just one not just a couple battalions of angels to come to our rescue and so father even now even now God even now Thank you for those who've responded. Thank you for those who have mustered up that mustard seed faith to turn it into the courage to just begin to respond. But even now, before it's too late, before the seat has been given to somebody else, before the flight is full, help them to claim their seat. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, God. Not just for your willingness to do this, but I thank you that you are doing it even now. And so, Father, no more excuses. No more excuses, God. We take what's ours. And right now, we take, we claim salvation because it's ours. Mm -hmm. You died so that we could be saved. And we claim that gift right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, Father. Amen. Okay, I Amen. I, I, I feel the need to just kind of explain a little because we have heard your complaints. You cut too mm. fast from the sanctuary. We want to see them march out. It's a little disjointed mm -hmm. between this moment and this moment. But I just hope that you understand. <laughs> yeah. out, of, out of the thousands that are watching, do you recognize that there's only maybe 10% that are commenting? Yeah. And of the other 90%, there are those who sit in the valley of decision. Yes. Who, for them, this is not a week-to-week -week thing. There are supernatural circumstances that have laid them right here in this yes. worship experience today for the first time. Yeah. yeah. And they need someone to look them dead in the eye yeah. and say, it is you, you and it's time to come. Yes. That's what this moment is designed yeah. to be. Ah, it's a powerful <laughs> message today. I'm trying my best to let it go, but Listen, I, man, I no, just want to make I, sure that <laughs> somebody don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Mm. Don't don't make excuses. Don't miss it. What a, what a powerful experience no, today. I, I know you got some takeaways. So, I just, yeah. No. It, it, okay. All right. So so we didn't get we, <laughs> we didn't get a we didn't get a chance to get on this morning. Okay? We didn't. We, we didn't. You know, we the, didn't. Yeah. So we're gonna take time now. Well, we 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 we, we, we got gonna take we time. Now. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna take yeah, time. Yeah. Now. And 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 there's a number of things. There's a number of things. So the takeaway, the takeaway, yeah. the yeah. What you got? What you got? What you got? What, what, you, know, <laughs> no. you know, I I got a chance to do, listen. I I love this. I love this takeaway. I got a chance to do, to speak to a number of um uh of of speakers pastors yeah. preachers and and get a chance to ask them this was the title of my session what's after your and 
And, mm-hmm. and so in the, in the presentation, we talked about them being pastors and yeah. preachers and leaders. And so then I said to them, you're a pastor and yeah, what you got? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So, <laughs> so what you got? <laughs> so, so I want to take it a little deep. Come on. Come I on. I want to take it a little yeah, deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love is, it. This is going to be right, right down your alley. So mm. last week I went to a funeral. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, we were there and then afterwards... I asked one of the media team people to kind of, you know, just let me look at your setup, you know, just just to see. Yeah. And it was a it was a nice setup. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get a chance to do this all. Yeah, continue. Yeah, yeah. I'm listening. But then I thought about churches, mm. media teams. Yeah. That are saying, oh man. You know, we don't have the equipment Women. of Oakwood. We don't have the we don't the, have yeah, the podcast yeah. I hear that room of Oakwood. All the time. We don't have the thing. And so we can't do, do because we don't have. So as a media pastor. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel it now. Is, I feel it. I feel it now. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this. <laughs> what, what you, you got? got? Come on. <laughs> to, what you got? What use what, what you have. <laughs> All I got is an iPhone. Do you know how much? Can happen with an iPhone, uh, even an uh, even under the Android anointing. anointing yeah, you, do, do you know how much co- content and and not just any content, no, just to put it no, down. No. Do you know how many people can be saved? Yeah, by what you do with well, all I got. Yeah, is I'm a, a, I can tell you right now, if if Paul had a cell phone and the, access to text messages. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. My Lord. The type of work he would have done. My Lord. The people who would have reached, the campaigns he would have scheduled. And, ooh, yeah. he's sending messages to the Corinthians written. Yeah. Imagine yes. if yes. he had modern technology yeah. with the ability to have video. Yes. Oh, my. So, so stop. Stop. Even if it's like, well, you know, we don't have all the, 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 the trappings of, you know, what. even while well, our worship service isn't. Okay, then don't. Then don't put your worship service out mm. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like this. If all you have, if even if it's a set, listen, I'm going to give a shout out now. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to give a shout out. I'm going to give a shout out to the Croydon Seventh Day Adventist. Come Church on, Croydon. Come on, Croydon. In in London, England. Okay, okay. Their Sabbath school. Mm. They do a Zoom Sabbath school, and which they, they, yeah. which they, they, you know, yeah, yeah, they do the other, you know, uh, worship or whatever. Yeah. But this, their Zoom Sabbath school is like a hit. Yeah, because they've, they've figured out their lane. And all they have is Zoom. Yeah. They, uh, so and and wh- they're making it work. Yes. So whatever it is, maybe, maybe, pastor, pastor, <laughs> maybe <laughs> it's just a Bible study you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just a... Uh, a prayer time that you do. You, maybe you realize, well, you know, our service isn't yeah, okay. Then just do do something. Yeah, there's there's just so much that God has given us. We are such a privileged generation yeah. that walk the face of the earth today. We have access and connectivity and a network. It is outrageous. In fact, uh, in just a moment, we're gonna get a, get a chance to interview. Uh, uh, Stephen Manders, oh, good night. who, I mean, talk about what do, what you got. I mean, no, this, <laughs> what you got. I mean, that, that the message in song was so powerful and has the ability to capture a concept. When it's now in music, people can yes. unknowingly hum, hum that, that, that thing to themselves yeah, yeah. and say to themselves, no more excuses. Listen, that refrain, no more excuses. Oh, <laughs> That's just... Gonna, yeah. That's the hook. That's yeah. the earworm yeah. right there. Yeah. That's the earworm yeah. right there. Oh my. Uh, so yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me let me slow down. Yeah. Let me slow down. Yeah. Let me yeah. slow down. Yeah. Yeah. We 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 have Stephen coming up. We do. And then I'm going to interview Pastor interview Snell. Pastor That's Snell. correct. That's so correct. So let's 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 yeah. <laughs> let's give you the time because my Lord, the, no, that the Lord has spoken to me today. No, I, I'm going to go back and listen. Uh, coupled with our morning devotional no, with, with can, Linda can Anderson. I, no, can I just can I just talk about the morning? Can I just talk about the twenty one days? Can yeah, I just? Yeah. I, it, it, it's good Lord. It's amazing. It, 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 yeah. If you are not in a season where you are 
doing some introspection and you are saying is sitting still with God and allowing yeah. him to respond after you've prayed and you've allowed him to respond. If you're not in that space, I, I, cause I think you, you have the potential of missing it. Yeah. The, oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You, we can fill our time with all kinds of other things and you have the potential of missing it. If you, oh, I get it. Six o'clock in the morning is too early. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Go back and watch it. Trust me. Go back and watch each and every day. It is just life changing. Yeah. Life changing. Life change. Get the book. Get the book. Get the book. Get the, the, the book. The author of the book is walking in. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop. 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 All right. But, but All right. family, we're gonna we're gonna be right back, uh, and uh, we will get a chance to chat with Stephen Manders in just a moment. Calling all leaders, visionaries, dreamers, content creators. We're inviting you to the 2024 Vision and Dreamers Conference hosted by Breath of Life. The theme for this year is excuseless. We want you to know that this year's conference is not about spreadsheets, budgets, or accounting. We're gonna be talking about the process your soul goes through whenever you're developing or implementing a vision. We're gonna be equipping you with the tools to develop a vision ethic. We're gonna be talking about things like your frustrations, how to manage your fears, dealing with criticism, or enduring seasons of waiting. Join us at the Oakwood University Church, May 17th through 19th. We're gonna kick it off Friday night with a Vesper, a vision talk, and a mixer. Join us Saturday morning at 11, where I'm gonna give a word just for you. We'll be joined in partnership by gospel recording artists Myron Butler and Levi. We're gonna have lunch together. And then that afternoon, there are gonna be a number of plenary sessions and breakout sessions. And we'll conclude Sunday morning with our vision brunch. We have an amazing lineup of speakers and presenters. Movie producer Devon Franklin, YouTube influencers The Onyx Family, and Grammy Award winning Kelvin Wooten, and many, many more. I want to invite you to go to our website and register right now at www.breathoflife.tv. Registration cost is $150, but I want you to know that what you're going to receive is going to be way more than what you actually give. I believe that God has put a huge vision or dream inside of you, and we don't want to allow excuses to smother it. I want to invite you to join us on the revolution as we continue the journey of becoming excuseless. Welcome back. Welcome back. Ah, I see. I see you in the comments still. Several of you are with us today, uh, rejoicing in the Lord, and we are excited for it. In fact, Kimberly Russell just put a link in the chat, OUCSDA.org slash online virtual services. A lot of things are there. Uh, we're going to be putting some of the information about the Vision and Dreamers Conference there as well. But I want to say a word of welcome to Stephen Manders yes, for, for, for being here with us in the Praise Cafe. I want to let you know that your online family I mean, week to week, they're praying for you, Doc. Wow. I mean, week for week to week, they, your name is mentioned in the chat online. Let's remember, Brother Stephen Manders, in prayer. I want you to know, across this great land, across the world even, as far as the Oakwood University Church online network reaches, yes, you are being covered in prayer. And we're excited to have you with us today. Thank you so much. It's much appreciated. Your prayers are much needed. As you know, um, God has a plan for all of our lives, but... <laughs> When, when God has a plan, the devil also tries sure to, he does. Sure he to does. shorten that plan. <laughs> so he's been busy in my life. So the prayers are much appreciated. Yeah. Much appreciated. So I, I just want to dive right in, man. Mm -hmm. We The song, we got a chance to hear it today. Uh, we got a chance to learn our parts. Yes, sir. Right? How many <laughs> tenders, altos, sopranos? The sopranos were running from us yeah. a little bit there. <laughs> right. But you, you walked us through the, you know, the entire song and its words. Take us through that creation process and how did that 
manifest? How did it come to be? Yeah, um, I'm always, listen, I'm always just humbled and inspired when Pastor Snell puts out a new series. Um, and this one was a, was different because, you know, when you say excuseless, it's, 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 you, you think about the, the concept of not mm. making excuses. Right, and, right. You know, you, to write a slow song about not making excuses could be a little, a little difficult. A little difficult, <laughs> you know, something meditative. Um, so, you know, I just it was prayerful. And honestly, from the time I saw Pastor Snell's video about the series, every time I watched that, the video, mm. I was just, I just get inspired and I start hearing things and like wow. God starts downloading things to my mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, so from the first time he put out the video, even while we were in practice for church, yeah. I'll be at the piano. They're like, Stephen, what, what are you doing over there? I'm just like, in my mind, mind. I'm thinking of <laughs> different ideas of how to pull it together. And over the weeks, um, God just kept giving, giving me the line, no more excuses. excuses. No, no more, more excuses. It's like a chant, something. Yeah, yeah. Something like a can, rallying uh, yeah, cry. Yeah. yeah, something you can, on your way to work, uh, you know, you may want to make some excuses, but you just say, no, no more, more excuses. excuses. No more excuses. No more excuses. That's you know? it. That's it. Um, so it was something that, you know, God gave me that can sit with the people, that they can take with them, something catchy. Yeah. Um, that can just, you know, tie in with the wonderful series and the book that mm -hmm. Pastor Snow has put out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it's all God. I give all glory to God. Listen, can we can we celebrate uh, Stephen in the chat and, and what God is doing through him here at the Oakwood University Church? I see mm -hmm. Donna says, wonderful job, Stephen. I am inspired by your journey. Rhonda J says, Stephen Manners, blessed and anointed by God. Gene Genevieve says, lovely. Somebody says, thanks. Uh, Marie says, I'm always praying for Minister Stephen. Manders, God is able. Thank you so much. Uh, let us affirm him in the chat. One last question before we shift. I know Pastor Snell is, is here. We wanted we want to debrief with him on this message today. This was a this was a heavy one. Mm. But one last question is: I I know that this comes this this song came out of a very unique time. Mm. What does it personally mean to you? I I, I know that if, you know we all, we all have our technical processes for whatever our gifting mm -hmm. our our craft is. Um, I know, and for you, this is very much your lane. Mm -hmm. And so there are some things that you can kind of rest on in terms of, you know, best practices, um, uh, techniques that you've done in the past. But this song, as I mentioned, came at a very personal time, an mm -hmm. interesting time for you. So what does this particular song and, and the, the journey that you went on to be able to create it, what does it personally mean for you? Yeah. Um, so as a lot of you know, as I deal with a lot of health challenges on a month to month basis, especially this year has been quite difficult. Mm. Um, and a lot of times, even while you're going through things, you know, sometimes you think you're the only one going through something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then you kind of sit back and realize that it always could be worse. Wow. Um, and I've, you know, talked to some of my doctors. I've been in situations where I would be kind of complaining to them about my situation and they'll explain to me how someone with my exact same situation is 10 times down the road <laughs> where I don't even want to, I can't even imagine, imagine. being. Wow. Um, and so sometimes when you want to complain about your situation and make excuses for not wanting to move or do anything, because sometimes when you don't feel good, you just don't want to do anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, so even when to write this song, I'm, you know, I, I could have made excuses to say, <laughs> well, I don't feel well, yeah. I'm, I'm sick right now, you know. But I realized that God had a plan and that the series was moving forward and that things in my life still need to move forward, even though the devil is trying to slow me down. Wow. And so I can't make excuses. So I need to sometimes to encourage myself day to day. Just And I sing it throughout the night. Just no more excuses to even wow. get up and move forward and take steps forward. And as you move, then God will do his part once he sees you doing your part. And so um, that, this song kind of inspired me to really write the song and not make excuses <laughs> uh, to make sure that we got, were able to get out in a timely fashion yeah, during the series so yeah. that we can encourage each other through the, throughout this series. So. Man, mm -hmm. I, that is absolutely powerful. Yes, sir. You, I mean, literally, you stand as a testimony of what the song means. Yes, sir. Uh, it, just the process that you had to go through to be able to create the song. As we as we get ready to shift, I want to pray for you. Thank you. Sir. Uh, I want to pray for you, uh, not not only for some of the health things you have going on, but also that God continues to bless the body of Christ with your ministry. Yes, sir. Uh, let's bow our heads. God, we are just so thankful and grateful that you have placed within the body of Christ the gift uh, that is Stephen Manders. And you continue to use him to put pen to paper and to write uh, songs and music that call us to action, that bring us back, bring back to our memories the themes, the principles, the, the takeaways that we are learning throughout this series and from this book. Uh, this will be a rallying cry.
But even now we've heard yet even further the testimony behind the lyrics, the testimony behind the creation process, and some of the things that he has overcome, had to overcome in order to be able to put this out. God, we pray that you would touch him that you would bring th everything back into perfect harmony in his body, that healing would take place. Father, we pray that you, who are the great physician, would, would bless him. But oh, not uh, even in addition to that, God, we pray that you would continue to bless him with the ability to bless others. Yes, uh, that even as he is continuing to work through some things in his own life, that he would continue to uh, give himself room and space and creativity to share the gospel through the written word and music. Thank you, God, for his life and his testimony and continue to bless us here as we continue the journey of becoming excuseless. These things we pray in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Family, stay right with us for a few more minutes and we will hear from Pastor Snell, interviewed by Pastor Paul. What's good, family? The Excuseless Revolution is underway. We've been having a good time testifying, praying, and receiving the word of the Lord. But I want you to know that the revolution is not over yet. The Bible says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. The next leg of the journey revolves around our fitness and our health. I invite you to join me starting on May the 5th for an online 30-day fitness campaign under the theme Excuseless. I want you to join me each week, Sunday through Friday, Sunday at 8 a.m., Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. When you join us online, you're going to receive a spiritual word. Then our coaches are going to lead us in a 25-minute online workout, and then we'll conclude the day where my health avengers, some amazing chefs, are gonna give us some tools on how to make tasty and affordable and healthy meals that help push us forward. Over the course of this 30 days, you can be a part of a weight loss challenge. And each and every week, there's gonna be a different challenge that allows us to build community around our fitness and our health. For too long, we've been making some excuses about why we're not eating well, about why we're not in shape, about why we're not in perfect health. I need you to know it's time to cancel those excuses. But when you join this leg of the journey, those aches and pains are gonna go away. You're gonna feel better as we continue the journey toward becoming excuseless. We are back. We are back. And we're back with Pastor Snell. Hey, hey. Listen, man. You know, okay. So typically uh, when I co-host, mm -hmm. I normally allow my co-host to interview you. Yeah. So it's been a while. It's since been a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're glad to be back together again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Reunite. <laughs> and it feels so good. <laughs> it feels so hey, good. Man, there you go. Listen, I um, I want to I want to make a, a, a radical left turn. Sure. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, make a, I, I know, you know. Um, take what's yours, and, yeah. and there are certain things within the message that sure. I do, but I yeah. want to take a radical left turn. Mm -hmm. There are countless individuals, mm -hmm. thousands of individuals, yeah. who after attending their church, sure. tune to Oakwood. Okay, yep. And they tune specifically to hear your message. Mm -hmm. There are in there are pastors who after preaching and mm -hmm. you know after ministering they yeah. tune and listen. Sure. And and I'm speaking to you pastor to pastor now. Mm -hmm. There are a number of individuals who are like, man, 
there's something about Pastor Snell. There's something, I can see the anointing. I can see the, the power in terms of the book and the impact of the book and the sermons, etc. And I remember going to a concert years ago, and if we can put the, the comments on the screen. Mm -hmm. I remember going to a Donnie McClurkin concert years ago, mm -hmm. and he talked about how people would come to him and say, oh, man, I wish that I could sing like you. I mm -hmm. wish that I could anoint like you. Yeah. And he was like, no. You don't understand mm -hmm. my journey. Yeah. You don't understand yeah. what I've gone through. Sure. Yep. The, the hard times mm -hmm. that I've gone through that yeah. has caused this to happen. Mm -hmm. And and so I want to put you on the spot yeah. in terms of give us a glimpse of not so much your routine, but mm -hmm. the 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 what what goes into mm -hmm. God, the Holy Spirit using you like he does? Because mm -hmm. this is not a Friday night special. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. The, the, you know, with the book, this right. is not just, yeah. uh, what, mm -hmm. to give us. Uh, yeah. 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 So a, a, a part of it is it's really laying claim to a particular promise in John 15, mm -hmm. where Jesus says when he the spirit of truth shall come. In chapter 15 and 16, he talks about the promise of the Holy Spirit. He says he will lead and guide you into all truth. Mm -hmm. And so a big part of that, it is, as you look into the word of God, remember the word is alive and it's active. So that it, it what the word is telling us is that there are living properties mm -hmm. that if we search for them, that can be found every time we open up the word. Yeah. And so a part of my prayer each week is all right, Lord, you are the author of the scriptures. Yes. Lord, you breathe life into the scriptures. Yes. So it's this is the prayer. Lord, help me to see what only you can see. Yes. Lord, would you reveal what only you understand? And, and it is a way that the Lord adds a freshness, yes. kind of a new perspective every time we open up the word of the living God. And so a big part of that shift, and not to say I don't study or use commentaries or mm -hmm, Hebrews mm -hmm, or the Greek, mm -hmm. but there is a, a different dependence where there was a time in my ministry where I was completely dependent yeah. on commentaries, uh, concordances, dictionaries, but now there is a radical dependence each and every week for the spirit to breathe. And if the spirit doesn't breathe and if the spirit don't give it, I just won't say it. Yeah. And and so it's not a it's less of a human exercise and much more of kind of a demonstration of what happens when weak, frail humanity mm -hmm. is just operating in dependence on God. Because honestly, this is the crazy thing. I mean, you're talking about behind the scenes. Every week there is a push past something that says, Man, you ain't enough. Mm. Man, you ain't smart enough. You ain't intelligent enough. You're not degreed enough. I have to push past all of yes. that on a weekly basis yeah. to kind of really, the only thing I've learned how to do is to leverage it into a dependence upon God so that his work would be done. And, and it's funny because even when we talk about certain things like what happened last time, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the goal was to produce this book and this series a year ago yes. so that even approaching it again was very scary very nervous because last time I got in front of my computer <laughs> to do this, the oil didn't flow. Yeah. It didn't come. It wasn't ready. But I, I realized, you know, and I get a chance to share that I was just ahead of schedule. Yeah. I was ahead of Providence. God gave it to me seasons ago. Yes. But it wasn't for the season I was hoping. Yes. It was for the season he ordained. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, a little bit, because uh, at the end of the day, there's some of us, because even when we talk about excuseless, mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily write this. Because what I'm seeing in other people, yeah. I wrote this because of what I'm seeing in me. Yes. And all of the different things that I have to push past or the, the things that kind of come to mind when it's time to act in faith, do this, or really operate with obedient hands, there's always an excuse. And a God in the last seven months has just been eviscerating Mercy. all of those Mercy. excuses, not Mercy. giving them any room to breathe. And so as I am being encouraged by God, I try to encourage God's people. Yeah. As I'm being challenged by God, I have to challenge God's people. Yes. And unfortunately, when I'm being chastened by God, <laughs> I have to simply be the conduit through which 
God speaks to his people yes. in that way. So yeah. That, yeah. that's what it is. No, and 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 th there is another part of it which mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> they say confession is good, it's for, good the for the soul, the soul. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. bad for the reputation. Yeah, yeah that's you it. Know? That's it. You consistently, if there's nothing, if if you consistently spend time in prayer. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. But you consistently get up early mm -hmm. in the morning. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. my struggle. Doc. That's my season. No, that's, that's, yeah. no, no. But 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 again, right. speaking to the pastor that's mm -hmm. there, speaking yeah. to the the writer that's there, mm -hmm. speaking to the individual. I want that anointing. I want mm -hmm. a, you've got to be willing to get up and make the mm -hmm. sacrifice, get up early to put in the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Very much. Uh there was a text where the Bible talks about how Jesus a great while before day, yeah. day, he would rise up and find a solitary place to pray. Yeah. That was his habit. Yeah. That was his custom. Yeah. And and I, I just simply want to adopt one of those things because there's just something about the morning stillness. There is a fresh anointing. Ellen White talks about how God gives a double portion of anointing to those that seek mm. a, get get up, rise up early to seek the Lord. And I do think that there are special, there's special secrets. There is wisdom that is available. As the older folk would say, while the dew is still fresh <laughs> on the roses, that that is hard to capture. It's not unavailable, unavailable, but it's hard to capture in the noise of the yes, day. Once yes. everything is, you, you, there's a ready, set, go button yeah, yeah. where, man, by the time the kids come knocking on that door and you're in traffic <laughs> and deadlines and you're trying to get it, there is something to be gathered in stillness yes. that cannot be gathered while you're already in motion. Mercy. Yeah. So, so listen, um, the last time. Yeah, the last time. The yeah. last time. Mm -hmm. um, we're so guilty of this. Mm -hmm. Yep. In terms of using it as an excuse, it yep. didn't work the last time. Mm -hmm. It, 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 uh, it, it and, and basing the yep. next this time, this time, yep, and the next time mm -hmm. on the last time. on the last time, yep. Mercy. No, because one of the things about failure is if you're not careful, it will leave its DNA on you. Um, and you know there are times, and let me be clear, there are certain things that we should learn from. Mm -hmm. There are certain things where we were just outside of God's will mm -hmm. and it collapsed as a lesson. But there are certain times where we're just ahead of God's yes. will or we try to do God's will our way. Yes. And so sometimes God kind of brings you back full circle. <laughs> Confession. <Yes>. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, God bless him. Uh, Dr. Melanson was my Greek teacher. Yes. Man, I got the most wonderful F, <laughs> you know, uh, my first time taking <laughs> taking that class. And no matter how much I try to get in somebody else's class, every time I would wind up right yes. back in front of Dr. Yes. Melanson. God would yeah. not let me escape it. But like through having to take his class, I ain't gonna lie, for whatever reason, it's like, I don't know, it's like I had like a red X on my chest. It's just like I was his target. <laughs> I mean, but there was something about I think he recognized by the grace of God there was some potential. Yes. And he was not going to let it be wasted. Yeah. And he was not going to let me take the easy way out. Yeah. And God would not allow me to blend in the class because his class would always be smaller. So like there were other classes where it would be like 30, 40, yeah, 50. Yeah, you could blend you in. Blend. It would only be like 12 or 10 or 8 in his. So there, there was just nowhere to hide. Yeah. And, and God would bring me right back to him. And I had to develop the, the discipline. I had to learn the competency. But I needed an accountability. Yeah. Because God was not going to let your talent or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. it is allow you to bypass it. I had to keep going back to that same yeah. place. And it's funny because like, I'm just like, no, Lord, I already did this yeah. and it didn't work last time. And I had to keep going right back to it until I passed. Yes. And it's so funny because I became so strong in it. So when you get to Andrews, the seminary, you either have to take the class or you can test out yes, yes. I was so strong <laughs> after being in, in Dr. Melanson's class, I didn't even have to take it on the yeah, master's level. Yeah. I was able to test, test out of it yeah. because God brought me back to the place where I had previously failed. And, yeah. and I do want to just say to somebody, because sometimes God brings you back to that same church or that same ministry mm -hmm. or that group of people or to reconcile with that marriage. And you're saying, man, last time, yes. last time, you didn't want to revisit the vision. You didn't want to go back down. No, last time doesn't have any bearing on this time. Yeah. Maybe right now you're in the right season. Mm -hmm. Maybe now you can approach, you want to get a promotion, but it's not about 
man, you know, let me curry favor. Let me get a favor with yeah. you. And I give a favor. Yeah. I slap yeah. your back. No, it's just about you're going to, God says, I'm going to allow your gifts to make room yes. for you. And now you've learned that lesson and you can approach it differently in a different season and you will get a different result. So t two more things that I want to um, talk about. Yeah. So um, our 21 day morning devotional mm -hmm. have been such They've been rich. a blessing. Very rich. And this morning, in terms of yep. Linda Anderson, I, I just, oh, yep. she, I, I love her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad that even though she's away, yeah, she's yeah. still with us. Yeah. I mean, stuff just rolls off her. Mm -hmm. like whatever. So she said this morning, and you kind of alluded to it. Yep. When I heard it, I was like, she's stealing my stuff. I was just, that's what I said in, 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 my, in my living room this morning. Yeah. Fear says, mm -hmm. what if? If, yep. Faith, Faith says, says mm, even, even if. if. That's it. Yep. Mercy. Yep. That's it. That's a game changing. Honestly, that could have been church for the whole day yes. right there. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. the truth. Yep. Yeah. But, but I think, though, that's, that's where all of us are with excuses. Yes. Because I do think that we look at what if, which, which tied in so beautifully to like, listen, just do your part. Yes. Just do your part. Stop worrying about the details, the data, the logistics, and yes. how it's going to work out. Because even if yes. you can't see those things, you can trust God to steer you to a predetermined yes. outcome. Yes. So, so this is the thing. Moses' fate would never be decided in Pharaoh's court. Mm -hmm. His fate would not be decided at the Red Sea. It would not be decided in the wilderness. His fate was decided as soon as he said yes, yes. to the call of God. Everything else was just the execution of what God had already planned. And, and I do need somebody to know, like on the front end, you're looking at all these challenges, but the same way God had already gone ahead and appeared to the elders and said, Moses is the one. Yeah. And he didn't announce it to everybody, just to the ones that matter. Yeah. I need you to know that God is already walking ahead of you into the job interview walking ahead of you through the application process. He's walking ahead of you into the physical therapy. He's walking ahead of you as you get ready to sit down with that ministry group that you're trying to lead and you don't know how it's going to come together. He's already softened their hearts and made a soft landing spot for you to be able to land as you seek to do his will. You also said your calling mm -hmm. is a compliment. It's a compliment, yep, yep. Yeah, but 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 and, and and Moses had all the reasons why it yep. wasn't him mm -hmm. in terms of the, the the failures and the deficits in his background. Mm -hmm. But yet God said, "No, yep. you are the exact You're person the one. that mm -hmm. I'm looking for." Yep. Partly mm -hmm. because of your faults mm -hmm. and flaws and your failures. Yep. Because you understand the Egyptian mindset, mm -hmm. yep. because mm -hmm. you grew up in the yep. house of Pharaoh, yep. and you know, that's why I'm calling you. He was more qualified. <laughs> but see, this is the thing. So remember, we talked about the school of hard knocks, right? Yes. Our preparation is not formal. <laughs> It's not mm. always in a classroom. Yes. It's not, and we talk about it in the book. Uh, you remember the movie, The Karate Kid? Yeah. And yeah. you remember yeah. how Mr. Miyagi yes. trained Daniel, yeah. had him waxing wax on, on and waxing on the car, wax on. Yeah. catching uh, flies with chopsticks, had him sweeping the floor. But he was developing patterns mm -hmm. and reflexes and habits. So remember, he got tired. He's just, done, I'm done with yeah. this. And then he charged him. And all that wax on, he yes. went, it put it, and he was able to block the punch. Yes. And through all that sweeping, those forearm muscles got strong, and those reflexes. And, and it wasn't really until, you know, he was under fire yeah. that everything he learned in service mm -hmm. proved strong and powerful. And there are things that God does and ways that God trains us mm. that are not conventional. It's crazy because, like, David's apprenticeship was not always in the courts of Saul. Yeah. I mean, it was learning how to feed and manage yes. sheep. It was in that alone time and in the solitude that certain impressions were made upon his heart and his and his mind. Like, I mean, when when you just look at the way God makes people, you know, again, he makes us in the fire, mm -hmm. <laughs> not mm -hmm. in the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just think a part of it is just saying, man, I God, you're up to something. I just can't see what that something is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the quote that you gave in terms of um gospel workers yeah. in terms of some God mm -hmm. trains through failure. Through failure. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> so I shared it Wednesday, shared it in staff worship Thursday, because I ain't gonna lie, that thing hit me so hard because 
I was interpreting circumstances incorrectly. Yes. Like every failure in my mind was the sign that God was displeased. Yes. That God was not with me. I didn't realize sometimes failure is a part of the curriculum. Mercy. It, it's in Mercy. the syllabus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we don't we won't embrace that portion of it because it doesn't feel good. Yeah. For us, God's will is always seen in affirmation, triumph, success, applause. Yes. But that's that's not always a part of his curriculum. Yeah. 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 Well listen, we 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 I don't want to land the plane, yeah, but we yeah, need yeah. to we land, land the plane. plane. We need point. to yeah. land the plane. Yeah. But, you know, um, take what's yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, stop being fearful. Yep. Mm -hmm. Stop making excuses. Yep. Mm -hmm. Stop creating yep. negativity mm -hmm. in your mind. That's right. If God said it, mm -hmm. if God said, said it, it, that settles it. Then just do it. Just do it. Yep. So what, what can you leave with us as we are recognizing our faults, flaws, failures, mm -hmm. and our lack, and what God is saying? Yeah. So, you know, especially when we talk about taking what's yours, I, I'm hoping that you would begin with the promises of God. Mm -hmm. They are as steady and as firm as the terra firma yeah. that you're standing on. So, like, I, you know, I just think we need to really, <laughs> I do something very weird um, most Sabbaths. I, there are two promises, Acts chapter 1 <laughs> and verse 8, uh -huh. the, the promise of the Holy Spirit. In yeah. Isaiah 55, your word won't return void. I write those promises down, mm. and I actually put them in my shoes so that while I'm preaching, wow. I'm standing on the promises yes. of God. Um, because one of the things I need us to get, the Bible says that all his promises are uh, yea, yes, and in Christ they are amen or truth. Yes. And, and, I, and I'm praying that like when God promises the Holy Spirit, I shouldn't be, oh, maybe I have this Holy Spirit. Maybe If we being evil will give good gifts to our children, yeah. he's more than willing to give the Holy Spirit yes. to them than ask. Yes. We should not be so tentative around our salvation. Mm -hmm. Like, no, you should take what is yours yes. All you've got to do is lay claim, claim to it by to faith, it. Yes. and it is yours. Yeah. And when God has given you that instruction or vision, listen, you don't need to walk around worrying about if or when. It's interesting. Like when you look at how God talked to Joshua, mm -hmm. he would talk to Joshua in future tense <laughs> about things that had not happened. Yeah. He would say, Joshua, I have already yes. given you the land. Yes. I just need you to go and take possession of it. And the, the language of scripture, it is like that. I mean, Jesus was never like, man, you know, demon, will you please come out? No, it's yeah. just like, come out. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It wasn't yeah. Jesus, the storm, would, storm, you know, when it's time for you, would you please stop? No, he commanded the storm to yeah. be still. Yeah. And, and there are times where God has given us authority in the word, promises in the word, and then you just got to act on that authority mm. that is connected to your assignment or the authority that is given to you in the promises so that you're not tentative, anxious, ambivalent, yeah. scared, but you operate with courage knowing that his will will be done. It will certainly come to pass. So as you, as you pray for us, mm -hmm. um, outside of the message, you've talked about the word. Yeah. Um, reading the word. Mm -hmm. um, asking the living word to breathe new life to breathe into the new word. life into the word you've yeah. talked about standing on the word mm -hmm. you've talked about taking time yep. early in the morning to spend with the word mm -hmm. and you've challenged us yeah. each and every one of us to take that time to put god to the test mm -hmm. to to prove him now mm -hmm. Please just pray over Certainly. our online audience it's to give joy. them the courage, mm -hmm. the strength, the fortitude to stand, stand. Yes. on the word. Father in heaven, again, we come before you not as just a matter of formality. This is just not the way we conclude a program. Lord, we believe that you are the God of all things, that you hear us when we call. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, my prayer for those who are gathered here collectively online is that fear and tentativeness, passivity, Lord, uncertainty, that those things would be swept from every corner, 
and corridor of our hearts. And Lord, we, we want to plant the word there. We want to put your promises there. And we're praying that through the agency of your spirit, that those promises would be daily quickened, that they would be daily made alive, that they would be daily revived so that we might be able to walk in the truth in our day-to-day lives. And so, Father, I'm asking, Lord, for that person, Lord, who, who is called to make a step of faith, Lord, I pray that the same way Moses had to take possession of the serpent, Lord, may they take possession of the power of your spirit, Lord, the gift of salvation, Lord, may they operate in their gifts in that same way, may they not be tentative in their approach, Lord, to their daily assignments at work, Lord, or with their family, but Lord, may they operate with the certainty, Lord, knowing that it's not a matter of if, but it's just a matter of when. So Lord, we're praying that you would just eviscerate, that you would skeet shoot every excuse that we prop up through the convicting power of your Holy Spirit. And Father, I'm asking in the name of Jesus, Lord, that there would be a change of approach, a change in disposition, and Lord, that we would embrace all that you've made available to us, and that we would take what is ours. Lord, would you bless, keep, and cover us as only you can, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pastor, thank you so much. Thank you. Listen, just just a a couple of notes. Um, Coming up at 5 o'clock today, we have uh, Committed and Covered, Mm -hmm. and it's our singles edition. Oh, good, good, good. Um, Amen. They're going to be... Uh, kind of debunking some myths yeah, about singleness. They do a good job. They and do a so great we, job. We want to support them. Then on this coming Friday, we're going to have our R three table talk. Yep. Uh, that's going to be at seven o'clock. Mm-hmm. And then you want to tune in at eight o'clock for mm-hmm. our weekend. Yeah. Exhale uh, with B-O-L. B-O-L. With B-O-L. What just happened? Yeah. <laughs> have mercy. Have mercy. So listen, there's a lot that that we are doing here. Oh, I also want to tell you about cameras on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so we yep. had our first cameras yeah, on I, last I knew, month. Yeah, I missed it, but I'll be on this uh, one. Yeah. So we had uh, like 22 people mm-hmm. from all over the world. Um but we want to encourage you. We, I want to double that number in faith. I need 50. There we I go. Need, 50. I need 50 of you. Amen. There's 3,498 devices. Yeah, yeah. I just need 50. You know, yeah. it's like Abraham. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. If there, he kept on. Yeah, yep. would you bless me? Yep. <laughs> and the Lord said he would do it. Abraham just stopped too early. So yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it. So, no. so I need 50 of you to join us with your cameras on mm-hmm. on Thursday. And um, you'll see that if you go to the... Um, virtual services page on the Oakwood University Church website, you will see how you can register mm-hmm. for cameras on. And uh, can I just say this too? Um, there's some of us that are still emailing, trying to figure out how I get books and or okay. t-shirts. Yeah. So again, if you would like to get the book, simple way. You can go to our website, www.breathoflife.tv. Mm-hmm. You can get the ebook or the hard copy also on amazon.com. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you want a bulk order, you want to get more than one, you want to get a group for your church, your youth group, your Bible study group, you've got to go to www.breathoflife.tv. And there is a special bulk right rate. When you get the individual copies, 18, but you get the bulk rate for $15. And then for the t-shirt, can't get those here to church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got to go to the website, www.breathoflife.tv. And we're praying that as this helps you, bless you, we pray that you would give to the Breath of Life ministry. There's mm-hmm. some ways to give that are coming up here on the screen. I pray that you would give either by purchasing a book or you can just make a donation online, www.breathoflife.tv. You can mail in your gift of any size, P.O. Box 5960, Huntsville, Alabama, 35814. You can call the office, 256-929-6460. You can text the phrase, give to B O L T V to one eight eight three six four give easiest thing you can do right now give a gift on cash app dollar sign breath of life tv every dime you give goes right back into the ministry so that we can fill up the internet streams and the airwaves with the glad tidings of salvation so doc i need you to, to let you go so you yep. can get some rest because mm-hmm. we're gonna Cause be back because you're back in the morning at yeah eight o'clock in the morning, eight in the morning. <laughs> amen that's it for our excuseless devotional series uh, we have a, um, you know, we, we, we set up for the rest of mm-hmm. the week in yep. terms of the lineup. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. So I know you're going to be on with uh, Kirk. Kirk in the morning. Yep. Tomorrow. All right. Um, but listen, listen, 
This has been rich. This has been rich. And we are just thanking you for joining us, whether you've joined us live or whether you're watching the rebroadcast. We thank you for your support. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for being part of our online community. And, and can I ask for some digital yeah. discipleship? Yeah. If this helped you <laughs> or you know it to help somebody, if you're on Facebook, hit the share button or mm -hmm. tag somebody in the link. If you're on YouTube, when you hit the share button, you can copy the link and send it to somebody. You can't make them watch it. You yeah. can't make them listen to it. But guess what? You can send it. So I'm going to ask in groups of fives. I need you to hit the bear. If you're on Facebook, five shares. <laughs> if you're on YouTube, copy the link. Send it to five people. Or if you want to get five copies of the book, send it to somebody yeah. and bless them as well. All right. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. And we'll see you as a whole next week. Amen.